storm sweeps away the big red. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome to the Kevin Bannon Show. It was Rutgers against St. John's. The night began with a knight named Kent turning into Superman. But it ended with a fellow named Artest turning into an artist. Coach Kevin Bannon won a heck of a ball game at the rack. The place was rocking, but unfortunately, you guys came out on the short side. Got off to a great start. Kids did everything they had to do except throw the knockout punch. You know, a very tough team, number 10 team in the country. We had them right where we wanted them, but we couldn't put them away. But you got to give them credit. They're an outstanding team. Did you wear down a little bit in the second half? I think we did. I think they're one of the deeper teams in the league. They have so many weapons, and they always play good defense. And I think there was a point when Rashad Kent got in foul trouble where we really lost our confidence, and I'm not sure we ever recovered. All right, let's go back to the highlights. Rutgers against St. John's at the rack this past weekend. Rutgers got off to a rip-roaring start. Coach, you came out of the gate and led by a score of 18-4. to four. Well, I'll tell you, we really stuck to our game plan. We wanted to get Rashad involved early because we knew they'd be out on our perimeter players, and the kids did a great job of, of getting him some easy baskets, which opened up some open threes. And Rob Hodgson, who's one of the top three-point shooters in the country, you know, knocked a few down early, and it, it, we just had everything going. We were hitting on all cylinders very early in the game. Jeff Billett with 14 points in the ball game. Hodgson hits another three. Rutgers on a 14-0 run, and the Knights looking real good. And then you talk about Salvi and the way he's come off the bench, a little bit of an ignite type guy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's if we can get him to score a little bit more, uh, that's really going to mean great things for us because he's so active on the glass, plays great defense, and he's, he's just a guy that's inspirational. What a first half for Rashad Kent. Uh, he just, you know, big time. This kid played anything like anything but a freshman. He was all over the place, uh, scoring around the basket, rebounding in traffic, just everything about him. You know, you can see there, it's more than just power. He's got a great nose for the goal. Kent was a one-man wrecking crew in the first half. He had 16, but back comes the Red Storm. Bootsy Thornton, who had 14 points, hitting the outside jumper, and then Ron Artest with a pretty play. Yeah, Ron Artest had a big-time night for these guys. And there was a point about three-quarters of the way through the first half that they made a run that I think turned the game around for them. We really had everything going our way, and uh, you know, you got to give them credit. St. John's tied the score at 40, but you went in the locker room up by seven. Yeah, we had a big time seven point run right in the last minute of the half that I think helped our guys' confidence and it just wasn't enough. Second half, five minutes in, our test picks it up and hits a three. St. John's their first lead, 50 to 49. Plays like that break your back. We have two guys on the floor for a loose ball. He picks it up and nails a three. It's a pretty emotional play. And here's Salvi. There's the dunk. Well, that's what we're not getting enough of. That transition so important to us to get out and run in the open court. And when we do that, we got a chance to beat anybody. Tyrone Grant did a couple of big hoops for St. John's at this point of the game. Yeah, well, this point of the game, Rashad's sitting next to me, and I don't like that. And nothing against Rashad. I want him out on the court. And when he gets in foul trouble, we're a whole different basketball team. And, hey, St. John's is a terrific team, and they took advantage of the fact that Rashad was on the bench. Jeff Greer keeping you close. You're down 67-63. And then Greer with another three with 37 seconds left to cut the lead to 71-68. Great to see Jeff playing with confidence. He really played a super game for us. And you got to give this great kid credit. Colin Charles uh, comes off the bench and makes six free throws. In the last minute. So St. John's goes on to win at 77 73. Kent was outstanding, but he spent nine or ten minutes next to you, and that really hurt you. Well, young players have a lot to learn, and Rashad, when he learns how to play in a Big East game and give us the minutes that we need him to provide, his numbers are going to be in tremendously increased. Rob Hodson, 18 points, eight rebounds. Solid. What else can you say? Oh, very solid. Rob shooting the ball well, playing with a lot of confidence right now, and he's had a great senior year today. And Jeff Billett finishes up with 14 points, three assists, and a steal in the loss to the Red Storm. I'll tell you, Kevin, great game. You'll get him again at Madison Square Garden. You get your chance for revenge. Well, we hope so. I mean, we see them within two weeks at the Garden. So pretty big game for us. And hopefully our kids take, come away with some confidence and we can get it done the second time around. All right, time for a fun segment for the coach. It's called Why It Worked. And it's brought to you by the Rutgers Court Club. Let's go back to this play in the last ball game and see how it unfolded for the Scarlet Knights. Coach? Well, here, you know, a little bit of motion offense, some, some, some little special quick hitter, we call it, where we're looking for a lot of different options. And what presents itself is an opportunity for one of our better shooters, Jeff Billett, 
to nail a three. I think Jeff's maybe fourth all time at Rutgers in three point shooting. Or is he first? I don't even know what his He's what the right record up there. is. Let's He's break right up it, there. <laughs> let's break it down further. Uh, right here, what we do is we, we spread them out, and Rob Hodgson, Jeff passes and cuts, and then uh, Rob Hodgson comes over and sets a ball screen, which all kinds of things can happen because Jeff Greer is a very good penetrator and also a three point shooter. They defend it very well because they switch, and Jeff makes a real good decision because he sees Rob Hodgson open with all that space over there. And then as that's going on, Jeff makes a basket cut. Right here, Jeff Greer was kind of open. We could have thrown a bounce pass to Jeff on a basket cut, but also Jeff Billet came off a weak side screen by Dante Jones, and we get him a three. And a pretty good pick by Jones. He used his body extremely well. Let's take another look at it. Once again, I think one of the th things here for a young ball player to learn is that Bill kept moving. He kept moving, that's key. Yeah, player movement, ball movement equals good shots, and uh, guys did a nice job in that segment. It always looks good on why it works. It does. It looks like it could happen all the time. A masterpiece, Coach. Great coaching job. <laughs> kind of like you with the uh, seventh grade travel squad, right, on Saturday mornings? <laughs> that's is right. That it? You know, if you lose, it uh, stays with you the whole day. We'll take a short break. Coming up next, a look at the Cats and the Canes. Rutgers with a couple of home games this coming week. We'll be right back. season a big east week for the scarlet knights of rutgers both are at home villanova and miami and coach you open up with the wildcats trying to snap a two-game losing streak absolutely uh you know this is a big stretch for us the good news we have two home games the bad news villanova miami tough teams in the league present a lot of problems for us but you know we're excited about the opportunity we've got to close these games out and get ourselves on a little streak so it's an afternoon affair at the rack this ball game in the afternoon it starts at 12 noon at the rack and Villanova going into their ball game at Notre Dame, 10 and 4, 1 and 3 in conference play. And Lapis looks pretty happy, coach. Well, I hope he's not that happy on Saturday, I'll tell you that. And when you talk about Villanova, a lot of different weapons. Howard Brown, their senior guard, averaging 13 points per ball game. Well, I think a lot of it revolves around Howard Brown. He's, a, he's the kind of kid that can go out and get 20 uh, pretty easily because of his versatility, his athleticism. He can hit a three. And they kind of, obviously, you see there the emotion that they feed off of. But uh, good perimeter team. And I think, you know, the X factor with them is how well their uh, one-two inside punch is with Biggis and uh, with Malik Allen. But outside, they've got a lot of weapons. Uh, John Celestan will be a little fired up to play in Piscataway as well. Brian Lynch, the junior guard from Belmar, one of three New Jersey players on their roster, so he's excited about playing you guys also. Yeah, I think that always adds to the to the rivalry when you've got some Jersey kids coming home to play. I think they get very excited about that, and, you know, it makes it special, particularly for the fans. Here's 6'10", Malik Allen out of Medford, New Jersey, averaging 10 points and five boards per game. Well, I think, you know, this team goes up and wins the Great Alaskan Shootout, and I think the reason why is you have two 6'10 guys with some bulk on them that have really improved from last year, Biggest and Allen when they're finishing and when they can get good minutes out of them, you know, make this going over team uh, a legitimate contender. And we talked about it earlier this year that you're going to be up against teams throughout the season where you're giving away size. Here's another perfect example. Yeah, and that's just, some, that's just life in the Big East, and you just have to know your own personnel. And with us, we feel like we present matchup problems. Number one, Rashad's kind of a unique guy that presents problems inside. And Rob Hodgson with the range on his shot, one of those guys is going to have to go out and play Rob out deep. So, you know, I think it works both ways. Who's going to take advantage of the other team? All right, from matchups to keys, and I know you want to kind of hammer that ball inside a little bit like you did to Kent at the beginning of the St. John's game. Yeah, that's our number one key. I think we, we know that we're a pretty good perimeter team, and when we can get a balance of inside scoring, which we did against St. John's, that's so important. So get, it, get Rashad and our other inside players involved early in the game. And challenge their big men with these two guys being 6'10". Yeah, and I think the second thing would be be disruptive on defense. And by that, I mean good ball pressure and try to not let them run their stuff. Steve Lapis is a terrific coach. I have tremendous respect for the things that they run. And if you just let them run their offenses, they're, they're going to burn you. All right, and key number three for the Wildcats. Well, we got to defend, as I mentioned before, the high-low. Uh, we present problems, they present problems. Two 6'10 guys that can play in Allen and Vegas. We've got to do a good job of defending their high-low game. And then lastly, no matter who our opponent is, taking care of the basketball right now is monumental for us. There's just 
Too many unforced turnovers, and when that goes away, there'll be a lot more W's than L's. It's got to go away soon. Can we underline also take care of it in the last five minutes of the game? Yeah, <laughs> we'll put that in big capital letters right there, absolutely. All right, Coach, after Villanova, you've got Miami, and as you said, at least it's home, but this team playing extremely well, 3-0 and in conference play, and coming off a solid win over St. John's. Yeah, I love their team. I really do. I think Leonard Hamilton can really coach, and, and I think they, they do a great job with their defense. They're, they're the most disruptive team, and, and they don't even extend that much, but they're just a great half-court defensive team, and boy, do they have some kids that can score the basketball. All right, this ball game is coming up on Wednesday. Miami 3-0 and in conference play, 9-2 and overall. They're only losses to UNC Charlotte and to Kentucky. They beat St. John's Wednesday night 84 to 79. Leonard Hamilton, the head coach in his ninth season, and he's doing a pretty good job. He sure is. Remember the days when you know, everybody, they were the pushover team, and boy, has this guy got this program going. And it starts with Tim James, and this guy is uh, one of the premier players in our league. I love his versatility. Here he is finishing at the rim. He can hit threes, and, he, and he's in a league full of athletes. He's as good an athlete as there is in the league, as you can see. 21 points, 15 boards against Georgetown, 22 against St. John's, and Johnny Hemsley really coming on. He had 35 at career high against the Hoyas. You know, that's the thing. With any good program, you need players to take the next step, and Helmsley was like a role player who, with some graduation, has now stepped up and become a key guy for them. And here are some other inside guys, and Mario Bland, the 6'6 junior, who's wide at 265, and Elton Tyler, 6'9", 215 soft. Yeah, they have good balance. You know, they have some bulk around the basket and some athleticism and good guard play. And, and I think they're, they're going to be a team that's going to get themselves into the top 20 to stay. And uh, I'm very impressed with them. But they're coming to our house. And, boy, are we going to really have to be ready for this stretch. They are undefeated at home. But on the road, they struggle like most teams in the league a little bit. But I think they're the most underrated team in the conference. I do, too. I think people haven't talked about them enough. I think Tim James is an underrated player. Mario Bland's a terrific center. And, and I think the job that Leonard Hamilton does as, uh, with his program is, is also a bit underrated. So, uh, you know, we got our hands full. You look around this league, Coach, you've got pressure coming from different types of teams. St. John's, UConn, West Virginia. What about Miami? Less pressure, more full court running? Well, they'll extend and then they'll just play off you. If you don't take care of the basketball, they'll just start to swarm you and really give you a lot of problems. But regardless, when you get into the half court, I just think they guard as well as anybody in the league. They're very, very disruptive. Do you think, bottom line, though, it's preparing for the opponent or you guys doing what you need to do to execute, or is it a combination of both? Well, it's certainly a combination, but I think it's how well you're playing. For example, right now, we've struggled a little bit with our confidence on offense. So while we're obviously trying to get ready for the quality of our next two opponents, we certainly better pay attention to ourselves because you can spend four days worrying about scouting and you don't worry enough about yourself and the same bad habits seem to reappear. And the only way to get rid of those is get in the practice court and work on them. Coming up next, we'll talk a little bit about academics and how it plays into the role with athletics. And can the two mesh at a university? Stick with us. The Kevin Bannon Show continues in a moment. Welcome back to the Kevin Bannon Show, and it's a pleasure to welcome right now Dean Carl Kirshner of Rutgers College, and we're going to ask him for his keys to success. That way we will be Kirshner's keys. Good to have you with us, Coach. Thank you very much, Bruce. He's Thank a coach away from the court, of course. He's now a dean at the uh, Rutgers College. And, Dean, let's talk about academics and athletics. I mentioned it going to commercial. You know, I always say it can be done. Sometimes athletes do better during their toughest, most difficult season. How do you think uh, the role should be about merging the two and merging it successfully? Well, actually, at Rutgers, the philosophy is that the student-athlete should be indistinguishable wherever possible from the average student. And so student-athletes at Rutgers live with other students. Uh, they eat where the other students live. There are no special programs for them except for where we feel there should be some academic support placed. Yeah, I think you know, a lot of people don't realize this, um, but all of our players, Bruce, are, are enrolled in Rutgers College where Dean Kirshner is the dean. So there's a lot of interaction between Dean Kirshner and his staff and all of our guys. And they do a tremendous job of monitoring all the, all the athletes. And, but certainly our players um, love it at Rutgers College and uh, get all the support that they need. Well, in fact, it's the same programming and support that we offer to all students who wish to pursue those options that we also, of course, offer to student athletes. 
Do you convey to these basketball players that they do have a, a responsibility to their teammates, to themselves, to their parents, and to the university? Yeah, as much as possible. In fact, there's two messages. And one is to the student athlete that you have a responsibility to represent yourself, your family, and the university. And the basketball players are, are fine examples of that in the most positive sense. And also that Rutgers University has a responsibility to student athletes because, in fact, they're giving up three hours a day for practice or they go on the road and they have to squeeze their academics into a more compressed schedule. And so we feel a responsibility, if not ethical, to provide some programming for them. Kevin, I think there's a lot of demands on, on the athlete up today. Well, you know, when you listen to Carl speak, this guy knows it firsthand because his daughter is an outstanding student athlete in our program. So he sees it from the perspective of a dean but he also has a parent and so that really helps us because he when we have parents come visit with their prospective student athletes I think his perspective is, is, is fantastic for us. And you had an interesting experience with, sure. with your daughter which kind of put in perspective. <laughs> well you right? know uh, Bruce you know intellectually that it's difficult for a student athlete but as a parent when my daughter was in her first year she found herself in Iowa at a field hockey tournament arriving to Newark Airport at midnight and she had an eight o'clock biology exam and uh, it was very difficult. She spent the whole night studying for that exam. But you gain a certain special appreciation for student athletes for what they do and what they have to do. What about Rob Hodgson, a young man who was already in a graduate program here at Rutgers? Yeah, Rob is just a great kid. Um, if you could clone him, I assume on the <laughs> basketball court as well as in the classroom, you'd have a, a, a wonderful situation. I met Rob when he was applying, a great kid then. He's really matured. He graduated last year. I gave him his diploma last May and now he's enrolled in a communications graduate program. He's just special. Talk a little bit about Rutgers University. I mean, it's got such great tradition, the eighth oldest university in America. What makes the university tick these days? Well, you're right, it is the eighth oldest. It's a colonial college founded in 1766, but in the over 200 years, it's grown up to be a major research institution. So it has very talented students, very ambitious students, very smart faculty members uh, with, with worldwide renown, and you mix the two together and you get special. And, and special in terms of the quality of academic programs, Rutgers departments in history and math and physics and English to name four are ranked by U.S. News and World Report as top 25 programs nationally. Um, there are 100 ma over 100 majors for students to choose from, and you have all the student life, recreation programming available. So you really have a, a major university that offers everything to everybody. We talked about the support that the players, you know, are kind of giving the university by playing. What about the support the university gives back to the players? I and mean, that's an important aspect also. Absolutely. I said before, it's almost a moral obligation to support student athletes because of their commitment to the university. Um, there are learning resource centers in place for all students, but especially for student athletes. Um, student athletes can meet with college deans, can meet with the academic support program within the athletics department. Um, there's a need to recognize that because, as I said before, their schedule is compromised by their commitment, that they should have special programming if they need it. Some student athletes don't need it, some do. And Kevin, quickly, is it good having him at least on your team, if not on your bench? The only problem <laughs> No bench, no bench. I don't want to be on the bench. too much about basketball. Yeah. That's, no, actually he was a great swimmer, still a great swimmer, but uh, I really appreciate anybody that's in the academic world that really has a first-hand experience with athletics because then they have the true perspective, and that's why we like Dean Kirshner as much as we do. Dean Carl Kirshner, thanks so much uh, for joining us. We wish you well. We hope to see you down the road. You're welcome. Enjoy it, Bruce. All right, let's tr make a little transition here and talk about the Hoop of the Week. And if the Dean wants to jump in here, we'll let him. <laughs> the Hoop of the Week is brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. And we go back to a guy named Rashad Kent who was just absolutely on fire in that first half of the St. John's game, Kevin. Well, the Hoop of the Week is a, a fun hoop to watch because, you know, we've got Earl Johnson getting in there and getting some penetration, drawing the defense. And Rashad with a heck of a finish. I mean, this is this is strength combined with athleticism. And uh, boy, we're going to see a lot of this over the next four years. Pretty good move, huh, Dean? Absolutely. <laughs> Reminds me of my old days. <laughs> Great commentary. And that's the Hoop of the Week. It's brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. All right, we'll take a short break. Coming up, we'll look at the Big East from this past week, and we'll look ahead. Stay with us on the Kevin Bannon Show. The two teams in the Big East Conference right now with undefeated conference records, and it's time for our weekly look 
around the Big East. It's brought to you by New Jersey Transit. Here's Ken Henderson. Saturday in stores, UConn's Khalid El Amin helped to dispose of the Georgetown Hoyas. 17 of El Amin's 22 points came in the first half, and coupled with Georgetown's 22% shooting from the field in the first stanza, the Huskies coasted 87 to 64. Elsewhere, Jamel Thomas had 18 points and nine boards to help lift Providence over Seton Hall. The Friars outscored the Hall 39 to 26 in the second half to open up a close game and win by 16. Monday, the Hall was looking to recoup from Saturday's defeat, and the Georgetown Hoyas provided just the medicine. Gary Saunders and Dwayne Jordan had 14 apiece for the Hall, and the Pirates recorded 15 block shots as they won by 11. Tuesday night, Syracuse's Ryan Blackwell brought his A game to the first Union Center, where the Villanova Wildcats were hosting the 20th ranked Orange Men. Well, when Blackwell left Philadelphia that night, he left with his own personal highlight reel. Blackwell scored a career-high 25 points, and often in spectacular fashion, to pace the orange. The junior forward also pulled down 16 boards and threw in a couple of assists as the orange men rolled. Wednesday night, Mike Jarvis's red storm got cooled off by the Hurricanes. Tim James had 22, Johnny Hemsley added 19, as Miami improved to 9-2 and 3-0 and and oh in the conference. And that's our trip around the Big East. And here's the standings right now in conference play. Coach, what are your thoughts? Well, we have the number one team in the country in the Big East. But other than that, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of people knocking each other off. And, you know, this, these standings are going to change quite frequently as the year goes on. I think Syracuse and Providence are both better than their conference records right now. You're right in the middle trying to make some room in these big weeks ahead. Well, now's the time. You know, whoever plays consistently well is going to have a chance to make that move ahead. And we hope that we can be the one that does it. All right, we'll take a short break. Some final thoughts coming up on the Kevin Bannon Show in just a moment. In the truncated pyramid known as the Lewis Brown Athletic Center or the RAC, attendance is up 21%. That's 2,000 people per season. That's pretty good, Coach. Pretty exciting. I hope that means W's for us. The, the atmosphere has been great. Villanova and Miami, two of the better teams coming into our house, got to make them into victories. And when you want to make them into victories, you've got to get those people into it early, get them rocking and uh, have, them, have them cheering because you're doing something positive. Oh, well, I don't have to ask for that. Yeah. We have the greatest fans. I mean that. The atmosphere is fantastic. So it's, it's up to the team and myself doing our job. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. That's it for the Kevin Bannon Show. We'll see you next week, everyone. Kevin Bannon gets career win number 300. The bulk of those victories coming during his stint as the Ryder head coach. But there's Steve Lapis on the Villanova side. His Wildcats were 11 and 4 coming in. Rob Hudson takes the pass from Jeff Billett. Put Rutgers up by 15. Brian Lynch, looking at it from the outside, kid from Lincroft, New Jersey, had 32 in a losing effort. But there's Bannon again with his milestone 300th win. And the Scarlet Knights, this is a good team, folks. Now 10 and 4 on the year with a 10 10-point home win today at Assembly Hall in Champaign. It was Rutgers today, 8,000 there, Rutgers on the break, Dante Jones lays it in, he had a team-high 21 points, it was 42-25, Rutgers at this point, then Jeff Billett on the inside to Joel Salvi, who had 10, Rutgers is 10-4, and four. they won it, 97-87. Well, Bill Park. Senior Todd Billet on hand to watch his big brother Jeff running the offense against Villanova. Jeff with a pass to Dante Jones. Billet had nine assists, and Jones had 21 points. The Scarlet Knights won the game with a big first half. Rob Hodgson taking the pass, and he'll hit the jumper. He had 20 in the game. Rutgers was up 19 at the half and won easily 97 to 87. Craig Eshridge. Kevin Bannon looking for his 300th career win, and he would get it. Dante Jones goes through defenders for the hoop. Rutgers led by as many as 21. Then Rutgers working it down low. Rob Hodgson feeds Alvadad tennis for the hoop. Rutgers breaks a six-game losing streak against Villanova, winning 97-87. to 87. 
In October, Darrell, since they joined the uh, Big East, Rutgers beat Villanova, 97-87 the final there. Not a bad game for Jeff Billett, 17 points, 9 assists, one of those right here to Earl Johnson. Rutgers by 19 at the half, Villanova cut it to 2 in the second half, but got no closer. Billett to Dante Jones, 3 of his 21 and Rutgers wins by 10. Manhattan, Columbia, and Elvis. hosting Villanova, and the Scarlet Knights roar out of the gate. Rob Hodgson with a pretty drive to the hoop. Rutgers up big at the break, 50 to 31. In the second half, Brian Lynch of the Wildcats single-handedly gets Nova back in the game. This one of six trifectas in the day, 32 points for the Jersey native. But Rutgers showed their medal freshman Dante Jones with the sweet follow. He finished with 21. Rutgers wins it 97-87 with some help from from Pat Everybody, I'm Dave Sims, sitting in for Bruce Beck. My pleasure to be with you here on this edition of the Kevin Bannon Show. What a week for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights as they come away with the victory over Villanova and then stumble against the Miami Hurricane Ball Club, which is a real good one. And Kevin, good to see you again. Good to see you, Dave. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the week. You go uh, one up and one down to go three and three in the Big East Conference. Well, we got off to a good start. We play a very good Villanova team. Great crowd. Got off to a great start and pulled that one out after they made a good charge at us. But Miami was a different story. Pretty good start. Five-point lead at the half, but they really outplayed us in the second half. They're a good team. Three and three in the conference at this point. You happy with that? Uh, somewhat, somewhat. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think we're a much more competitive team than we were last year, so there's been a lot of progress made. But I do think we've got to take the next step. This is a wild and crazy league, and you can't be inconsistent if you think you're going to survive. No question about it, especially with the teams up top. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this past week, Villanova and uh, Miami. We start with the Nova game. John Celestan in his homecoming, and it was not a real good one for John as uh, the home fans were all over him. But or you got out early, 6 nothing lead. Alvitas Tanis, big lead for you guys. Yeah, we did a good job of getting Alvitas involved early with Rashad Ken out with the injury. We get it to Alvitas, we get Earl Johnson in transition. I mean, it was a, a real nice, crisp start for us. And I get uh, Tanis involved early, and a good pump fake inside. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, we have to do off our defense. Get it out and run, run the court, and uh, the guys did that well early in the game. Hodson wide open for three right here. This makes it 26 to nine, Rutgers. Well, three-point shooting is very important in our attack, and uh, we found people all night long and shot the ball very well. Dante Jones is an explosive scorer with the jumper. Here's Celestan going in. Lynch, though, he killed you. He keeps uh, Villanova close. That makes it 36-22. Lynch played a terrific game, and we knew they'd make a lot of runs at us, and we had to fight them off, and they did that towards the end of the first half, but we were able to finish it in a little bit of a flurry. Great thing for you guys. Some wide-open threes, and Hodgson nails him. He's been playing great basketball for us, and kids found each other very unselfish and uh, you know it was, it was very good to see against a good Villanova team. Rutgers 50 to 31 at the half. You saw Howard Brown hit a uh, jumper. Brian Lynch uh, gets Villanova back into it. You're playing without Rashad Kent who's playing with a hip pointer in this game. Yeah we, we did uh, we got good production from the four and five spot but you know right here like biggest the seven foot center you knew he was going to be a factor before long and they started to hit some downtown threes but we again we fought him off. That's uh, after cutting the lead to two Rutgers response Dante Jones 64-57 Rutgers Joel Salvi hustling and then it would have been goaltending anyway that makes it 70 to 59. Nova won't go away though Howard Brown three-pointer here 71 66. Deep threes, and uh, they did a great job of executing down the stretch, and they really made it into a war, but our kids made some big plays. Big shot right there to make it 73-66 by Jeff Billett. Salvi's going to miss this shot, but Jones is there for the follow. Rutgers wins it 97-87. to 
And then in the game on Wednesday, Jeff Billett and Rutgers hosting Leonard Hamilton and the Miami Hurricanes. Earl Johnson off the bench, big three right here, 13 to nine early on for Rutgers. Well, we got off to a half decent start. We knew this was a very strong Miami team. It was a very physical game. We went after each other uh, real hard and uh, tough team, very and tough team. Helmsley makes it 17-13 Miami. Jeff Greer is going to get a steal and a laugh. 17-15, pretty tight game at this point. Yeah, absolutely. But again, our defense kept us in it. We were able to get some transition this never happened in the second half and good to see jeff greer teeing it up and knocking down the threes rutgers up 18 17. starting to play with more and more confidence trying to get over the hump and here you see rashad stepping out i mean he just couldn't do it. we only got about 10 minutes out of him and we're not sure what his status is at this point well he has performed so well billet hits a three 23 17 rutgers at this point johnson comes back with the jumper you're looking pretty good at halftime up 25 19. yeah when, you, when you're up like that against you know probably a top 30 or 25 team in the country you got to feel good but you know that they're going to make runs and boy they, they came out on fire helmsley off the double screen 46 42 miami earl johnson comes back to make it close 46 45 miami and then billet gives you a lead 48 46 and that was from from that point on we just they took took their defense up another notch and we just didn't respond and you know they did a good job mario bland had a terrific game for them very strong around the basket 12-0 run for miami and jennings with a steal leads the salmons back to jennings miami wins at 74 to 62 and you come away with the one in one week dante jones last two games pretty impressive with the 18 points per game well i think he's one of the top freshmen in the league and every game dante gets more and more confident and comfortable and you can see his numbers and billet also in double figures and look at the 8.5 assists right where you want him absolutely he's playing more points than two these days so you want to see those assists up there and the points are always there and jeff greer as we mentioned uh, pretty solid 12 points per game the last two games yeah jeff's coming on and we need that because he, he's a very important performer for us because he's one of our slashers he can get to the rim and he can also hit deep threes and we need more consistency from jeff greer and that's uh, one of your hallmarks no question about it hitting that three let's uh time now for our why it worked it's brought to you by the rutgers court club and coach take it away well, this is a play I think we're going to see where play where we get out in transition. It's actually off a of made basket by Villanova. We get the ball out and we run the court, run the lanes wide, get the ball reversed, and we get a little inside shot here for Alvitas Tanis. And the, uh, it's just, again, it, what's good about it, it was even after a make. We get the ball out. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't. It's after a steal. We get it out quickly. I think the important thing is that you run your lanes wide. Jeff Billett, the point guard, takes it down the court. You've got Jeff Greer running. You've got Salvi running the court. So good spacing, you know, hard for the defense to cover you when you have that kind of spacing and then at this point you want to try to get the ball uh, to the side where we get it to Jeff Greer we look for Salvi posting up and now you'll see the other players come into view Greer's got a half decent look at a three but he has a discipline to make the extra pass and now you're trying to reverse the ball and try to get them in an outnumbering situation and Billet finds Johnson on the other side of the court and you always want your big man to trail on your break. And, and Tanise is, is a pretty athletic kid. He runs down the middle, and Johnson does a terrific job of finding him. All and then, right. you know, right here, he makes a nice little up and under move into a jump hook. And Tanise, you needed him with uh, Kent hurting with the hip pointer. And nice lift. The crowd got into it, got him pumped, and got everybody uh, going. And that's why it worked. Brought to you by the Rutgers Court Club. When we come back, we'll uh, take a look at the second look at the St. John's Red Storm and also coming up on the schedule for Rutgers, the Syracuse Orangemen when we return to the Kevin Bannon Show. Look under Sprite Jam. And for Bruce Beck on this edition of the Kevin Bannon Show. And coming up, a very interesting week for Rutgers. They've got the St. John's Red Storm for the second time this year and for the first time this year, the Syracuse Orange Man. Let's uh, revisit what happened the last time Rutgers got together with St. John's. And in that first meeting, Ron Artest down at the rack got a steal and a dunk and a layup here. He hurt you in this one. He was the difference. I mean, we, we got off to a great start in this game, and he really stepped up at both ends of the court played great defense and really got out and hit some threes on as a uh, he was a difference in the game and marvis bootsy thornton not too bad either 14 points and two steals 
in that first meeting? Yeah, they, they have a lot of weapons, you know. They really have some kids that could put up big numbers on a given night. And that's that's why they're a top 10 team in the country. There's a lot of weapons out there. And they, they also, like Miami, play terrific defense. And down low, they've got the veteran Tyrone Grant pounding down in the paint. He's pretty reliable down there. He sure is. I mean, I think he's the heart and soul, really. The guy does all the dirty work for them, does a terrific job for that team. Tyrone Grant does for St. John's what Oakley used to do for the Knicks. And Eric Barkley, point guard they've been looking for for a long time. He had 10 points and three rebounds last time out. Oh, you got to love his game. I mean, he's a guy that has so much talent, but yet most of the time he's pretty under control. He can hit the deep three and he runs the team well. He's very unselfish. Yeah, no question about it. He's a classic point guard. St. John's and Rutgers coming up Saturday, January 16th at Madison Square Garden. Now, the other big matchup coming up on Monday, January 18th, it'll be at the rack. It'll be Rutgers against the Syracuse Orangemen. Syracuse at 11 and 4, 3 and 3. These two teams with uh, similar records in Big East play. And Jim Beheim's team, not what they usually are, what they usually are at this uh, stage of the game. Jimmy, of course, in his 23rd year. Jason Hart, junior guard, does a nice job in the backcourt for them. Yeah, he really does. He breaks you down. He makes everybody better by his penetration. And Jason, he really does penetrate well. And off the dribble, he shoots a jumper fair, you know, just well enough to keep you, keep you honest. Yeah, I think yeah, that's the key. When they get out and run, uh, they're a much better basketball team. They run off their defense. And then this guy, Eton Thomas, is, uh, I think he's one of the best talents in the league and a guy that's really come on strong. Terrific shot blocker and a guy that uh, makes his presence felt in the middle. Ryan Blackwell, pretty good player, too. Number 32, got a dunk there. And how do you stop him? Well, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got a lot of ways he can hurt you. He can hit the three. And you see him make a very strong move there. I think he's Mr. Consistency for them. He's just an understatus, a solid player and tough guy to stop because he's so so much of a complete player. Syracuse at 3-3 three and three at this stage of the season. Are you surprised that they're, they're at 500? Well, I think, you know, this time of year, you, you, you know, you find yourself and I'm, I'm a little surprised, but you know what? This, this is an NCAA caliber team and uh, they're playing some new kids and it's going to take some time, but, you know, it's, hey, it's a tough test for us. Whoever put the schedule together, I'm, I'm not happy with them to say the least. And uh, <laughs> But you know what? We're excited about it. It's on uh, ESPN. It's a big Monday game, and our students come back actually that day. It's been a sellout for quite a while, and we're really looking forward to the opportunity to play them. Not only do you want to play well, but you want to show that atmosphere, too. I know for recruiting purposes, you want to show the place is really wild. Yeah, I mean, we, we feel like we have one of the best, if not the best, home court atmospheres. And as we bring the team along, it's, it's just it already has been murder on people, and we want it to even be worse. And so, uh, yeah, it's great to spotlight that kind of place. Let's, Kevin, take us through your keys for the matchup against Syracuse. Well, I think the first thing everybody knows about Syracuse is 2-3 zone. They do a great job with it. They do it very in a very unique fashion. And our kids, uh, we're only going to have one day to prepare for them after coming off a St. John's game. Not what you want to see. It takes some time. So we've got to do a great job of attacking the zone. Got to be a quick study. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the other thing, I think the second thing is keeping them off the offensive glass because we, we have a problem with that. You know, we're not the biggest and most physical team, and they have some kids that are relentless rebounders, so we've got to do a good job of boxing out. Yeah, that'll be key. And hopefully, you can get Rashad Kent back. And his guard penetration is always tough. Yeah, I, I think with, uh, you know, with, with their team, Griffin and Hart do a good job. When they're playing well, those two guys are very much in the mix. And if we can, can keep control their penetration, get them into a half court situation I like our chances a lot better heck of a sequence coming up St. John's and Syracuse for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights up next here on the Kevin Bannon show two outstanding members from his ball club the seniors Jeff Billet and Rob Hudson when we get back You know what the local high school hoops in the Nike Super 6 Invitational at Madison Square Garden. Sunday, January 17th, beginning at 11 a.m. First, it's Long Island Lutheran versus Marist High School. Then LaSalle Academy clashes with St. Benedict's Prep. Next, perennial New York City powerhouse Rice High School battles Christian Brothers Academy. That's the Nike Super 6 Invitational, Sunday, January 17th. Tip off at 11 a.m. Tickets available at the Garden Box Office or call Ticketmaster. Get your tickets now. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dave Sims, sitting in for Bruce Beck on this edition of the Kevin Bannon Show. And we're joined by two of the outstanding seniors on the Rutgers Ball Club. First, we, to my right, we've got uh, Jeff Billet. And to my left, and uh, to my left is Rob Hodson. And gentlemen, good to have you with us. And one thing, I want to start with you, uh, Jeff. 
senior year, is it, are you in a situation now where you cherish absolutely every moment you know, on the basketball floor in school, because you know it's come to an end. I think, um, you know, this being my last year, um, you start to, you know, cherish practices even a little more. You know, you look forward to coming in and getting to practice, and, and then the games mean even that much more to you. So, you know, you realize it's your last year, and next year, you know, you're not going to be doing this ever again. So, and like a day like today, you know, today's the last day you'll have practice ever on this day. So, you know, it, you kind of, uh, you don't want to take anything for granted. And I don't know. How about you, Rob? Same kind of, same kind of approach? Yeah. I mean, just uh, enjoying it. And I don't know if, if that's something that every, every player does, you know, enjoy, enjoy playing. I mean, we're doing what a lot of kids dream about, you know, playing major college basketball. And there's nothing like playing in the rack. You know, when you look up, uh, you know, you're warming up and people are filling in the top rows of, uh, of the rack and you know, you're playing a, a big team on a, on a big day, you're playing on TV and it's just, uh, you know, it's a great feeling. I think, I think, you know, one of the best things about these guys is that they're, they're going to be able to look back and say they didn't leave anything behind. I mean, they get, these guys get up every day and they get some things done in the classroom, around school, and certainly on the basketball court. Um, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't inherit better people and better players so um, you know it's not like these guys are gonna look back and say if I only did this or I only did right. that not these two guys yeah you don't want those regrets no, no question about it hey guys with these two big games coming up you got St. John's you got Syracuse mm -hmm. it'll be a second time around with St. John's how do you go about stopping Ron Artest well just uh, you know he's a, he's a great he's a very capable player can do a number of different things and just uh, make him work you know make him work on offense for some things and make him play defense and uh, you know just go at him from all different sides and, and hopefully that'll wear on him I, mean, that's what you, I think that's what you generally do with better, you know, the better players, uh, you know, make them work for everything. Right. And Jeff, you're going back to the scene of the crime. You, you like Madison Square Garden after last year in the biggest yeah. tournament, right? So this yeah. would be good for you going back, right? Yes, now playing in the garden is uh, always, always special. Um, you know, you walk in there, there's just an aura about the building. And, you know, last year, you know, we played so well there in the biggest tournament. You know, it would be nice getting back there. How do you think you played this year? So far, I think um, as a team, you know, we, we've been improving. I think we've gotten better since the uh, you know, beginning of practice. I think we just, um, you know, now we've got to just put a couple wins back to back in the Big East and kind of get on a roll. Yeah, I think, you know, these guys were knocking on the door, and thanks to these two guys who have been there and done that, and they've had so many big games in the Big East, they're kind of teaching, you know, we play a lot of young players in our rotation, and I think Rob and Jeff are the perfect captains to try to teach a team how they can get over the hump, which is what we're trying to do right now. Yeah, you bet. Uh, what's it been like? I mean, you guys have been around for a lot of years, playing together. I mean, certainly that, that is something that you can build on, especially with a lot of young guys in the club. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's something that, you know, has to be addressed in a, in a way, and that we have, you know, a lot of newcomers this year. You know, it's something that every team has, but since we have so many more new, new players than, than most teams have, uh, you know, it's ever more important for us. And I think the, you know, and that's been the key the, the whole, thus far, and, and will be, you know, how fast these guys develop and, and we get everything going together. Yeah, it's nice to have, uh, do you have like a personal radar knowing where, where Rob is sometimes in certain situations? You know, he's, you know, he's going to maybe, you know, towing up behind the line. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, we've been, we've been playing together for four years and, Almost it seems like you know every minute of the game we're always out there together and you know I, I always you know this last especially the last couple of games it seems like I've been able to find him spotting up behind the three or know he's going to be you know if we need a basket to get the ball to him in the post and you know when he's going to get fouled and you know it's it's I've, I've enjoyed playing with him for four years and you know he's such a good player and it's it's fun to play with. One thing you're going to be taking away when you leave Rutgers you have the career three point. Uh, Shot maker at Rutgers. What? How, how does that feel for you? Oh, it's very special. You know, you know, a school like Rutgers, a tradition that the schools had in basketball, and you know, I know the three-point line hasn't been in that long, so somebody, will, somebody will probably get me pretty soon. But uh, it's, it's nice to know I was there. Yeah, uh, that was a heck of a shot too. Did you run that play specially for? I mean, was that a, a, was that in the course of the game, or was that a special call that you made uh, in that game? That we well, just it was it was a special call that really didn't happen, and Jeff made it into a, a okay. great play you know he got the ball with some room and then he had to make the play and he did a terrific job of not freezing you know he you always tell your guys you got to be aggressive you know yeah. and, and he did and had he not done that you know it would have been a desperation three as opposed to a, a drive to the basket so he did a great job with it Rob Potts and Jeff Billett thanks for joining us here on the Kevin Bannon show and time now for the hoop of the week is brought to you by the good folks at Dunkin Donuts and we take you back to the Villanova game, an impressive 10-point win by the Scarlet Knights last Saturday. 
Well, this is a play where Rob out outlets it to Jeff, and Jeff finds Dante in stride with a terrific finish and a three-point play. Uh, good team effort. You get a good example here of what our captains do. Rob rebounds the ball, gets it out quickly. Jeff throws a pass right on the money, and Dante makes a strong finish. And there it is, the Hoop of the Week, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. And when we come back, we'll take a trip around the Big East Conference. It's been one heck of a season. we got a long way to go, but a lot of interesting things happened this past week. We'll show it to you right after this. Yesterday. Take a look around the Big East Conference, and it's sponsored by New Jersey Transit. Saturday, the Craig Escherich era began as Georgetown toppled the Friars. Kevin Braswell scored 20 points for the Hoyas as they beat Providence 75 to 70. It was the first time in the past 27 years that the Hoyas had played a game under a coach other than John Thompson. Elsewhere, the Mountaineers shot a measly 29% from the field, including a stretch where they didn't make a basket for nearly 13 minutes against the Huskies. Shoot like that and most teams will blow you out, especially if you're playing against the number one team in the country. Meanwhile, Ron Artest had his first collegiate triple-double Saturday night. It was against Seton Hall. Artest, 13 points, 12 boards, and 11 assists helped the Red Storm cruise. On Monday night, Eric Barkley scored 20 for St. John's, including this huge three-pointer to earn the Red Storm their 14th win. La Jolla has almost pulled it out, but Georgetown's Dean Berry just missed the three-pointer at the buzzer. Tuesday night, Syracuse shot a dismal 8-for-22 from the free-throw line, and Jamal Thomas poured in 19 points to help lift the Friars 67-58. Big East brought to you by New Jersey Transit. And now we look at the Big East standings. They're brought to you by And One Apparel. And look at the bunch in the first division of the Big East. Not too bad, Kevin. No, well, Connecticut's the cream of the crop, but certainly St. John's is for real. Everybody sees that now, and Miami's coming on strong. So we, we're represented well nationally, but it's a dogfight everywhere else. I think it's going to be a real exciting uh, second part of the season. Tommy Amaker's got Seton Hall at 5-2. and two. How about John McLeod? Notre Dame is at 3-3, three and three, and they were picked at the bottom of the pack, and that's pretty good for John. Oh, I think he's doing a, a wonderful job with that team. I think Notre Dame and Providence certainly would be the two surprises of the league, and they've done a great job. And it's, it's, hey, we're only a third of the way there. There's some. There's going to be some unbelievable basketball being played in January. No question about it. The uh, what matchups down the road? I mean, I know you get you have St. John's, you get Syracuse immediately in front of you, but any other matchups that sort of make you go, wow, that that's going to be a tough one. Well, this really is our toughest stretch because you know we've played St. John's twice in in two weeks, and and then we have Syracuse, and we've gone through Villanova and Miami. So this has been a difficult stretch for us. We do have a stretch in late February where I think we finish with maybe four of six on the road. It doesn't matter who you're playing. When you're playing right. four or six on the road, it's a tough way to finish. Road games are always difficult, no question about that. Let's take a look at the uh, field goal percentage leaders in the Big East Conference. And no surprise that Connecticut is number one. But how about Miami? Are you surprised at that, that they're number two? Uh, I'm not surprised because, you know what, both those teams get so many easy baskets off of their defense. And you would throw St. John's in there as well. I wouldn't consider any of those teams as being phenomenal shooting teams by any means. Maybe Connecticut's a very good shooting team, but I'll tell you what, those guys score off their defense. That's what good teams do. Yeah, they do a heck of a job, no doubt about it. The, uh, the standings, we took a look at them. Connecticut, number one in the country. They are the center of college basketball, both men and women. So that's something for the Big East to be proud about, to say the least. And give me one more key ingredient, this back-to-back -back situation you have here with uh, St. John's and Syracuse. Well, I think with us, we've got to get good inside play. We get, we, when we got it, we had a nice win over Villanova. When we didn't have it, Miami got us in the second half. So I think, you know, we don't expect to outplay their front lines, but we need a pretty good performance from Alvitas, Tanis, Joel Salvi, and Rob Hodson to give us a chance. We can match up with most teams around the perimeter. Got to have good inside play. All right, take our final time out. Come back for final comments right after this. I don't need. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin, with these two big games coming up, St. John's and Syracuse, Rashad Kent, you got to have him. What's his health status? 
Well, right now I'd say it's 50-50. Uh, he, he seems to um, be making progress, but it's a very painful injury. He tried to give it a go against Miami. We only got 10 minutes out of him. Uh, hopefully we can get more minutes out of him in this, this very difficult stretch. But you have to think long-term as well. So yep. if we have to give him up for these two, just get him for the others, we'll do that. All right, Kevin, my pleasure sitting in with you. Great Good to see you again. Thanks. Have a great weekend. I'm Dave Sims for Bruce Beck. Thanks for joining us here on the Kevin Bandit Show, everybody. We'll see you next time. Well, he certainly is, especially if he plays. And, um, you know, we, we've got to do a much better job uh, than we did last time. We just let him rule the paint, and he did a great job. And for a freshman to be so poised and have so many moves around the basket, uh, it's extraordinary. And uh, he's, he's a very special player and a very important player in this league. So, yes, we've got to do a better job against him. Tyrone Grant's had kind of a rough week. He had the car accident. Of course, he's still suffering with a sprained wrist. Is he able to play in this game against Rutgers? That's the first question. Well, first of all, Tyrone will not play. Um, what we've decided to do is, is try to get him 100% healthy. So we're going to take Tyrone day by day, week by week, game by game, and when he's 100%, he'll play whenever that is. Uh, thank goodness for us, you know, we've got a, a pretty good amount of wins under our belt, and we also have got some players that now will get an opportunity. And um, hopefully, uh, between Donald Emanuel, Albert Richardson, and then some smaller lineups, uh, we'll find a way. Uh, it won't be as maybe as exciting or as pretty, but we'll find a way. I hope to win and uh, and keep things afloat until uh, Tyrone gets back. Among the program around, it's Rashid Dunbar that's taken Marist, elevated them from a disappointing eight and fifteen a year ago because he's putting up some good numbers. When you're getting almost twenty seven points per game out of one guy in your backcourt, you're doing a good job. That's why colleges all over America are showing interest in the six three junior. And Marist will take on Long Island Lutheran, the Crusaders, affectionately known to their fans as Lou High, a record of. Team go inside, outside. Boy, the potential. The sky's the limit for this kid. Junior, good student, good stroke, good citizen. That's why colleges are real interested. Rutgers has already offered. Kevin Bannon has already offered him. Got other schools like Kentucky and Clemson and St. John's very interested. Rated the top sophomore in New Jersey last year. Dunbar hitting one of two. He played here at the Garden as a freshman in the Super Six tournament. Two years ago, Maris led by James Felton, who played for St. John's last year, lost to Elton Brand. They're, they're well coached. Um, uh, they have uh, very disciplined, have a, a great point guard and Todd Billet. Uh, we know that we, we, we have to come to play. I know we know that it's going to be a real good game for us. And I think when you when you look at a game like this, especially in the garden, it starts with the backcourt. You have one of the best backcourts in the country. You have one of the back best backcourt players in the country. You played Christ the King earlier this year, and you saw what their backcourt did. Todd didn't have the greatest game in the world, 4-14 that day. What does he have to do to, to, to go into the teeth of this Rice defense? I think uh, since Christ the King, we've made some adjustments as a team uh, to the way we handle pressure and um, the way we're passing the ball to take a little a little of the pressure off Todd himself. And for instance, in the St. Anthony's game, then it, it freed him up a little bit to be a little more comfortable and not have to work as hard to handle the ball and then shoot the ball. So I mean, that's a, we, we learned from that game, I believe, and I think we're a better team since then. Um, so I know we're going to have to do that with Rice, with, uh, with their pressure, their great defense that they play. Everybody's going to have to contribute a little bit. You know, we knew we needed some more balance. Uh, when you just can't rely on one player. They don't rely on one player. Uh, they have talent distributed throughout. And we need to have our other kids step up also. Mo, I know your guys. Andre Barrett, Kenny Satterfield, Todd Billett, some great tri-state area players. But there's so many more. And earlier in the week, Mike Quick talked to the guru of high school basketball, the guy who knows all the ins, the outs, the ups and downs of all the tri-state area ba basketball players, Tom Konchalski. In your report, you don't give out a lot of five pluses, but you give the big fella from St. Patrick 
Samuel Dallenbart, a five slash five plus. That, that's a big rec rating for me. Well, what that means, Mike, is a five is someone who by their sophomore year is projected as being a con major contributor at the top 20 program, and a five plus is someone who will dominate college basketball. I think Samuel has that kind of potential. He's not there right now. His offense really lags behind his defense and, and rebounding, but he is a legitimate shot blocker, probably the best shot blocker in the senior class, and he's the landmark recruit of the Tommy Amateur at Seton Hall. Three very good guards in New Jersey that you give fives across the board. Billet, Deshaun Williams, and Jason Williams. Let's start with Jason. St. Joseph Metuchen heading off to play for Krzyzewski at Duke. Well, he's, he was uh, tailor-made for the Blue Devils. He's a quality kid, a 3.7 student, and a terrific player. Who, in the last year, his biggest development has been he's become so much more of a point guard. He's made his teammates better. He could always score always was very good athletically, but he's become much more of a distributor than he was in the past. And he's strong, he's athletic, he's very skilled, and uh, he's going to be a perfect player for him. He came down to Duke and Rutgers, decided to go to Duke, of course. Another guy that we mentioned before, Deshaun Williams, is going to stay in the Big East, go to Syracuse. And this is a guy, when he's healthy, where he can play the passing cap. He's had a knee surgery and he's had foot problems in the past, and he's not still 100% yet, Mike. But he's an explosive scorer. He thrives in the open floor. He can hit threes and bunches when he's in stroke. He's a bit of a streaky shooter. But he's, he's, he's a perfect Syracuse player. He really goes up and down the floor, and he likes the open court. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he was at Patterson Catholic when Tim Thomas was still there, wasn't he? I mean, it seems he, like so long ago. Exactly. Tim Thomas, when you, when you jump from college to the NBA, it makes you, uh, you seem like a dinosaur. It seems, like, it seems like he was there forever, but he seems like he's been gone forever. But uh, Villanova was right there, and they were a little disappointed when he did commit on his first visit to, to Syracuse. Speaking about forever, that's what it's going to seem like as far as Billets running the point down at Rutgers. And, and Kevin Bannon, what a job he's done. I mean, being able to get Todd Billet at the midnight hour, that, that just gives you great stability on and off the court from Todd. The total package. Wonderful kid. Superb character. Outstanding student. Princeton was involved. Uh, as along with Virginia and a number of other schools, and a terrific player. Great three-point shooter, better shooter at this stage than Jeff was. In a scrimmage against St. Raymond's, shot 8 for 14 from 3. Can really light it up. Didn't have a good game at Fordham yesterday against Christ the King. They did a good job of defending and shot 4 for 14, 3 for 8 from 3. But a terrific shooter, a terrific player, and you know, he's someone you want to spend four years with. Well, I know Josh Moore is going to want to spend four years with Todd Billett, and he'll go and play down in Piscataway for Bannon as well. I think if Josh can make the improvement he did from freshman to sophomore year at St. Anthony, if he can do that going from St. Thomas to Rutgers, then I think Rutgers fans are in for a nice little treat. can be a terrific half-court center. He has, very, he has good hands. He has very good post moves, which he learned from both coach Bob Hurley and also from Bill Walton at Walton's big man camp uh, in the summer of 97. And he just he wears size 22 shoes. So you don't expect someone with that size feet to be that agile. He's got to work on his lateral movement, becoming more of a defensive factor in the middle. But uh, he's, a, uh, a, he's a mountain masquerading as a man, 7 foot, 285 pounds, and he really can be a factor in the Big East. Up in Connecticut in the 70s, there was Walter Luckett at Colby Cathedral in Bridgeport. In the 80s, Chris Smith, and now the Cougars have Marcus Cox, without question. Back to Madison Square Garden as we get set for Game 3 of our Nike Super 6 Invitational Triple Header. It will be Christian Brothers Academy out of Winthrop, New Jersey, taking on Rice High School, ranked third in the nation. Kenny Albert and Mike Quick back with you. Victories for Marist High School in the opener and LaSalle in the second game here today. And now we have our marquee matchup. Yeah, Kenny, this is the big one now because whoever wins this game, that state gets the pride. And you're talking about the number 10 team in the MSG Daily News Tri-State Poll, Christian Brothers, and the number one team, Rice. And when you talk about defense, Rice, our number one team, plays defense as well as anybody on the high school level. And Christian Brothers Academy under head coach Ed Wisolinski with a record of eight up and two down. And they are led by Rutgers bound Todd Billett. His brother Jeff starts for the Scarlet Knights this year. He sure does. And I know coach Kevin Bannon from Rutgers is here. He's going to get a good look at Todd and what Todd can do against pressure when he plays Rice today. 
such a fundamentally sound player. He really does it all for this team, has for three years. His senior year, he's gotten a lot stronger. He can shoot as well as anybody, a tenacious defender, and he makes people around him a lot better. This is the type of guy that you want to build a program around because not only is he a good player, he's a better person who's putting up some pretty big numbers. 20 points per game, three assists. And there you see the defense, two steals a game. And Rice High School undefeated this year, 11-0, 25 consecutive victories. The defending senior, number 22, Todd Billett. At center, at 6'8", senior, number 55. From right about that same free throw line last year against Georgetown in the Big East playoffs. And what a career he's had. Great free throw shooter for... Both Bob Wenzel and Kevin Bannon down at Rutgers. And boy, I tell you, when you can get two billets to play for you, you're doing all right. Todd. Scrocky into the corner. Billet from three. He's got it. Boy, and he does a nice job there. Just 5'11. He has 6'8. Kyle. Kenny Lynch can play serious defense. Billet pulls up and gets the roll. Nice job by Todd. Kept that extra second in the air just to change his shot. I know you spent some time with him in the tunnel a little while ago. Absolutely. We have Sean Exani from Red Bank High School in New Jersey. Sean will be attending Rutgers next year. Marcus Cox, Kobe Cathedral High School in Connecticut. Your state represented, Mike. Danny Walker, Paul Robeson, and Ryan Williams to round out the bunch here for the slam dunk contestants. And it's something I think that makes this uh, tournament something special when you have a slam dunk contest and a three point contest. It makes it fun for like getting other tri-state kids involved. Well, here's Xani, 6'7", heading off to Rutgers. Doesn't get it to go. Well, there are the judges throwing up some fives and some sixes. Arthur Staples from Newsday. Barry Baum from the Post. Christy Eckert, the Daily News. Ron Kicker, the New York Times. So five junior forward, 10 points a game, 12 rebounds for Cardozo. So we're going to go into round two here. And again, one dunk. Sean Xani, his second chance. The windmill going with the left hand. Sean played last night against Gainesville of Florida. He only had 10 points in the 10-point loss in there. there. You see the judges, and the crowd really doesn't like it. Oh, the I'll crowd. Sandy was getting on the judges. Everybody's getting on the judges. I tell you, I judged last year. It's, it's a tough spot. You know, people want to jump something. This represents Rice's biggest lead, and Billet comes back with a three. Well, he averages 20 a game, and three-year starter. Scary to think what that team would be like in the front court if Anthony was playing this year. Billet underneath, hits, and will head to the line. So Billet makes that basket because he constantly moves without the basketball. When Todd doesn't have the basketball, he's constantly moving. The scrocky top of the key, Billet had circled around. He had given him the ball first. Nice little wrap around and gets it to go. But that basket, the result time before this Rice team gets you. Billet from three. You know he'll play right to the final horn. And nobody else has scored. They've only gone seven deep. Todd Billet with his fourth three-point field goal of the game and a timeout with just under three minutes remaining. And we spoke with that earlier about coaching a pair of billets. Jeff, now a Rutgers senior, and Todd, a senior with the Colts. For eight years, I've had uh, a kid in the backcourt who uh, well coached, uh, I mean, uh, responds to coaching well. Um, can shoot the ball, can penetrate, um, doesn't need to be the star of the team, is very much a team player in addition to being a very good player. Uh, we're going to miss uh, Todd and, and, and the family next year. Uh, our uh, Rutgers gain is our loss, definitely. And Rutgers head coach Kevin Bannon on hand here at the Garden once again today. His club, along with Jeff Billett, losing to St. John's last night. Trivia question for you, Kenny. And able to step away from the basket and consistently drain 14 to 17-foot jumpers. 
Make it five three-point field goals today for Todd Billett. He's preparing for his games here at the Garden over the next four years. Is at Rutgers tonight at the rack, 8,588. Rutgers ball, nifty passing. Rashad Kent with the slam, seven points. Nice hair. Nice tux. Cues with the ball. Damon Brown on the corner here, going to put up the three. Or, uh, good. 13 points. Shot no good here by Rutgers. They're on the break. Jeff Billet to Jeff Greer, who had 15 points. Billet lays it in. And then a three-point game with Rutgers at the end. They'll inbound the ball. Syracuse steals. Ryan Blackwell puts up a shot to tie it. No good. 74-71, Scarlet Knights. And then there's those big rivals, Milligan. Some familiar. Get the cut, man. Who says basketball's a non-contact sport? First half, Rutgers' Dante Jones. No relation to Dante's peak or Barnaby Jones. The, ste the steal and the layup and the foul. Rutgers by three at the half. Final tick. Syracuse trailing by three. Ryan Blackwell steals the pass. Heaves up the three. No good. And Syracuse has an upset stomach. Rutgers upsets number 20 Syracuse, 74-71. That is a look at sports. Have Who did they play tonight? Rutgers, the obligatory coach of the very excited, the obligatory shot of the very excited Jim Beheim. Joel Salvi, though, with the booming salvo. Scarlet Knights are leading by 11. All right, real men don't taunt. Closing seconds of the half. Jason Hart from way downtown. Bang. But that was all the heart for the evening. Jim is getting really excited now. 35-32 at the half. Rutgers, team traded leads hard on the drive. Charge and a foul. Syracuse still trailed by three. Final minute, Rutgers by four. Alan Griffin, unbelievable. Jeff Greer converts the layup in transition. The Knights by six. Good night, Syracuse. They do get to within three with 1.9 exactly seconds left. Rutgers looks to inbound. Ryan, Mr. Blackwell, steals it for the tie. That's it. Rutgers wins again. Defeats and upsets Syracuse for the second year running. Who is that he hugs? 74-71, it's a final. They won Syracuse, beaten Syracuse two in a row after having lost 22 of the previous 27 meetings with the Orangemen. And uh, our friend Mr. Hart ended with just the 17, a fairly quiet 17. Dante Jones, 23 to lead Rutgers. Texas and Kansas issue. Just Houston Rutgers, excuse me, you've got something on your face right there. Dante Jones. Throws down the dunk on the follow. Rutgers up 35-32 at the break. Early in the second, Ramon Brown, the three-pointer. That puts Syracuse up for the first time since early in the first half. They've got a 38-37 lead. Now we fast forward under a minute to go. Syracuse down six. Alan Griffin, the three-pointer. That would cut the lead in half. He gets it to go. It's 71-68. Now 20 seconds left. Griffin basically has to force the three-pointer. Rutgers gets the rebound. Jeff Billett. Jeff Greer on the break. A little layup. Good to go. Rutgers back up by six. Now under two seconds left. Rutgers up three. Trying to inbounds ball. It's deflected by Brown. Ryan Blackwell, a three-point shot to send it to overtime, but no. Rutgers wins 74 to 71. They won two straight against Syracuse. 12 record last season. College ball, Syracuse at Rutgers. Rutgers in the home white on the fast break. Alvitas Tenise. They build up a 13-point lead, but Syracuse trailing by six, final seconds. Alan Griffin cuts it to three. And then they steal the inbounds pass. Ryan Blackwell for the tie. No good. Rutgers celebrates a 74-71 win. Both teams, four and four in the Big East. And in Albany today, Siena in the home white host. In Piscataway, Rutgers beat Syracuse 74-71. Let's go to the videotape, first half. In the home white, it's Rutgers steal by Dante Jones with 23 points, and Dante Jones puts it in, and he's fouled. Then, six foot 11, 235 pound Alvitas Tanis of Lithuania, and there he goes. Stuff it? No, he banks it in. Rutgers by three at the half. 12 seconds left. Jeff Billet to Jeff Green. Rutgers by six. They win by three as Syracuse missed the three-pointer at the buzzer. National Hockey League, San Jose. Their pitcher, Hedekers, in Big East play tonight. For that, we take you to Piscataway. Take it to the rack with the blood and the guts of senior Rob Hodgson with a career night for the freshman Dante Jones. He with 23. Rutgers lost a big first-half lead against Syracuse. But come money time, Jeff Greer put it away. 
They also hit 15 of their final 18 foul shots. Rutgers knocked off Syracuse 74-71. How about that? On the ice, the Devils note. And in men's action, can Rutgers win at home over Syracuse for the second year in a row? of Rutgers have lost four out of five and could see tonight's home game with 20th ranked Syracuse as a season maker or breaker. Second year coach Kevin Bannon says, I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on the game. I'd like to see the players do that, which is just what senior point guard Jeff Billett wanted to hear. Quote, I told the team we got to come out and play it like it's the NCAA championship game. January Madness at the rack. Look at this. Rob Hodgson and the Knights involved in a war with Syracuse. He went through three jerseys. 20 seconds left, Syracuse down four. Alan Griffin misses the three. Rutgers gets it to Billet, who outlets to a wide open Jeff Greer for the layup. Rutgers up six. They also hit 15 of the last 18 free throws. Five seconds left, Griffin hits the three to cut it to three. But after a timeout with 1.9 seconds left, Syracuse gets the inbound. Ryan Blackwell can tie it at the buzzer. No! Rob Hudson and the Scarlet Knights survive 74-71. Blackwell leading the schizophrenic Orange with 18. Syracuse has beaten Indiana and Michigan, but lost to Ohio, Seton Hall, Providence at home, and now to Rutgers twice in a row on the road. Rutgers getting a season-high 23 from freshman Dante Jones, now 11-6. and six. Five of those six losses to teams ranked in the top 31. Now to Kansas. Scarlet Knights number 45, Rob Hodgson. Change clothes more than a runway model doing a show. An elbow to the eye opened up his cut. He would switch to jersey number 24, reopen the cut. So this time, Hodgson comes out with a number four jersey. His line, 15 points, five rebounds, three assists, three jerseys. 20 seconds, cues down four. Alan Griffin, three is no good. Rutgers to Jeff Billett, outlets to a wide open Jeff Greer. First time all game, somebody led by more than five Rutgers up six. But five seconds left, Griffin, three, pure silk. Cues within three, they were nine of 22 beyond the arc. After the timeout, 1.9 left. Hughes steals it. Oh. Ryan Blackwell, who had 18 points and 10 rebounds, oh. cannot tie it with the three. Said Blackwell, I just grabbed it and tried to put it up. It wasn't a clean three-pointer. You saw Hodgson there. He said, I couldn't see the cut, but it must have been bad because it was bleeding. Syracuse goes down to Rutgers, 74-71. to 71. Rutgers freshman Dante Jones, a season high, 23 points. As for Hodgson, his coach Kevin Bannon said, Kevin Bannon said, what can you say about Rob? Three jerseys, bleeding everywhere. They should make a commercial out of that for the kind of kid we want in the program. How do we... Last night, huh? And senior Rob Hodgson, if you're a little squeamish, you can turn away now. Hodgson getting poked just above the right eye and cut in the second half against Syracuse. There it is. Coming up here, middle of your screen, he's wearing number 45 in the paint. Down he goes. But Hodgson, this guy's got the hockey player's mentality. That is, if he can walk, he'll play. He had to get stitches. He had to change jerseys twice and finish the game wearing number four. And with Dad looking on, he emerged from the locker room with under four minutes left got back in the game hit a couple of big foul shots that gave the Knights a three-point lead they won by three Seton Hall with a big win over 20th ranked Syracuse Rob Hodgson hockey tough we love him and baseball now the comeback at beats the orange again. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome to the Kevin Bannon Show. For the second consecutive year, Rutgers upset Syracuse. And boy, did the Scarlet Knights need it. They had lost two in a row, four of five, but now they have some momentum going into this weekend's ball game against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And coach, the rack was rocking, and you guys played an outstanding game to come up with the W. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere, one of the best I've ever been involved in, and the team stepped up big, and boy, did we need it. It was a tough stretch for us. We played a lot of games without Rashad Kent, and to have him back and to get that win was really well, well needed for this program, <laughs> believe me. All right, let's take a look at the weekly highlights, and let's begin with the ball game against St. John's at the Garden, second time you met these guys. 
in two weeks, really. And I'll tell you, how to do it without Rashad Kent with the hip point. Yeah, that was difficult for us. We know that St. John's is such a good team. They moved up into the top ten, and they have so many different weapons. And to play without Rashad was real difficult, but I thought our kids played a terrific game, and we almost got there in the end. Good driving move by Rob Hodson. Rutgers up 12-11 early. And Joel Salvi, six points in 13 minutes, contributing again. Yeah, sometimes when you lose a player, it gives other players opportunity. And I think Denise and Salvi stepped up tremendously during Rashad's absence. And I hope they can play with that kind of confidence now down the stretch. I'll tell you, Coach, Jeff Greer really has it going now. He had 23 in the ball game. Well, we've been waiting for Jeff Greer to show us what he can do, and right now he's back to getting his confidence level. He slashes to the rim. He hits deep threes. It's just good to see. Tanise hitting the outside jumper. You want him shooting for three in the future? Uh, don't start that. I hope he's not watching right now. But Alvitas is a terrific shooter out to about 15, 20 feet, but we need him to post up as well. So he's done a good job of mixing that up. LeVar Postel in a big game, 21 points in 29 Nine minutes for the Red Storm, but Jeff Billick comes back with a three here. He had 17. Yeah, Jeff, you know, rock solid, did a great job for us. And, you know, Postel for them just, just murdered us. 16 points in the second half, and he does it in a variety of ways. All right, you're down five in the second half, but there's Greer again going coast to coast. You know, we just got ourselves in a position where we could have gotten this victory. It's happened over and over again. But here you just, you know, just some tough plays that we couldn't pull it out at the end. Jeff Billick with a three-point field goal. Under 10 minutes to play, and Rutgers is right there, down by one. And you talked about Tanise, 13 points, six for seven from the field. When you give a kid with that kind of confidence, give him confidence, he has that kind of ability. It makes all the difference in the world. Right now, Alvitas has his confidence back. So you're down by three late, 74-71. But here's that big St. John's break, and Ron Artest finishes. 12 points, 11 rebounds, six assists. What I, you got to give them credit for is off their defense. Anytime they get a block shot, steal, or whatever, they convert. All right, let's go to Big Monday, a sellout at the rack. Rutgers against Syracuse, and this place was absolutely up in arms early on, but Jason Hart, he was ready to play also. Boy, he had a big-time night. He has stepped his game up from last year. It's incredible. He's one of the top guards in the league. Hodson on the baseline, hits a three. We're tied 12-12 early. Important for us, you know, confidence-wise, to get off to a good start, and our kids certainly did that. And that was Jeff Phillips' only field goal of the game. If somebody would have told you he had one field goal, you would win. You'd probably say, maybe not so. Well, I think it's a good sign for our team, the fact that Jeff didn't have to put up big numbers and we were still able to get the win. And from the point guard spot, he played great basketball. Nice unselfishness there as Rashad Kent back in the ball game in this one and scoring on a good, strong move. Great ball movement throughout this game. Well, that's important. You know, that's our game. We don't have guys that are going to go out and get 25, but we have a lot of guys that can get 15 for us because we're unselfish and we have a lot of weapons. So that it was good to see. And Rashad working on the defensive end. Yeah, Rashad's getting him back. You don't know what it does for our confidence and for our team in general. He does so many things to help us win. Here's Dante Jones with the follow. Well, Dante, 23 points, 9 rebounds, player of the game. I mean, the kid was terrific. He showed why he's one of the top players in the league, freshman in the league. Syracuse on a 7-2 run early in the second half. A nice little roll there for Damone Brown, who finished with 13. But now Rutgers getting back into it. Good presence there by Dante. See, I, this is what I like about our team in this particular game. When push came to shove, we really found ways to step up. Right here, we had the ball out with under two seconds, and we were able to get a basket with a tip in by Alvitas. I think our team showed some nice progress in this game of getting some things done at critical times down the stretch. And what about the warrior, Rob Hodge? He looks all bloody there. I think they were filming another version of Rocky, maybe Rocky Part 8 or something, but Rob going on and off the court, bleeding, went through three jerseys, came back, took a huge charge uh, after his third jersey change. Look at his hustle here. What a I mean, the kid played some game for us. And he hits a couple of big free throws to give you the lead, 65 to 62. I think this was the biggest Rutgers play down the stretch. Great ball movement, and you end up with the easy hoop. Well, this could have ended. They knocked in two very contested threes to their credit and it took us right down to the 1.9 mark and they did a great job of deflecting here. Earl's our best guy at throwing it long. We work on that in practice but hey, they got a finger on it, made it interesting but we found a way. Ryan Blackwell missing at the buzzer and Bannon oh, 
taking the deep <laughs> breath. Jeff Greer, we talked about his offense. He is on fire right now. Yeah, well, we need that from him. Boy, it's, those numbers are nice to see. And if, if he can kind of kick it into gear for the rest of the down the stretch, what, what a, how good is that going to be for our program? Dante Jones doesn't look like a freshman right now. No, he's the, you know what? He's the youngest player in the Big East. And he's not playing like the youngest player. He's, his numbers have been great. And he is he's just playing with a lot of confidence. Rob Hodson wore uniforms numbers 45, 24, <laughs> and 4 in that last game. And he really was a warrior. By the way, you need a good cut man for this ball. Absolutely. Club. You know, Dr. Monaco and our trainer, Glenn Renolet, great job. Boy, got him back on the court after taking in four stitches. And Alvinas Tenis coming on offensively with 9.5 points over the last two ball games. That gives you a better rotation, 8 or 9 now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we need it, and uh, it, it really can give us a shot in the arm. All right, we thought about what to do this week for why it worked, and Kevin, you had a pretty good idea we never got to. That crazy that ran on the court at the end of the game, right? Well, there's a guy that comes to all our games. <laughs> Seth went on the court and did some kind of dance from the Three Stooges after yeah. the big win, and I thought we'd get that on camera, but we didn't get it, so I don't know why it worked anyway, but I'd like to see it on camera. But... All right, let's get to something uh, a little bit easier. This is why it worked again. As we look at a Rutgers play and see how it unfolds, why it worked is brought to you by the Rutgers Court Club, and again, it's great for all movement we're talking about here, Coach. Yeah, this is just a little quick hitter that we run sometimes to get a player like a Jeff Greer or a Dante Jones the space uh, needed to slash to the basket. And so our guys executed pretty well here. We set a little stagger screen for Dante coming off. Uh, Alvitas and Jeff Greer set a little screen. And really what it does is it, it gets his man occupied, but it also gets Jeff Greer's man a little bit occupied right here because Dante does a great job with his cut going shoulder to shoulder with Jeff Greer. So obviously Jeff Greer's man has to help on this play. And the key here again, Kevin, you got to give up your body and set up a good screen away from the ball. Jeff sets one and then gets one, and that's very important. He, he, he did something that his man had to pay attention to, and now he comes off Alvitas' screen, and you want to get your players the ball where they're productive, okay? And Jeff Greer's very productive on the run going into the lane, and this gave him the opportunity to do one of the things he does best. So if you give, you will receive, right? right? Absolutely. <laughs> I think, you know, we can't make the shots for him as coaches, but what we have to try to do is put them in a position where they can, we can use their talents. And that's why it works. Brought to you by the Rutgers Sports Club. And it's always nice when it works and it looks that easy, but it's really not. My f it's my favorite segment of the show <laughs> because we always make the shots and everything works. All right, one week we're going to surprise you and say, <laughs> why didn't that work? We'll take a short break. Coming up next, the Irish of Notre Dame this weekend. Stay with us. Up next for Rutgers, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and they've had an interesting year. They've got some quality wins at Miami and at Providence. You think this is just a home court team? You're wrong. Rutgers has a tough task this coming weekend. Rutgers taking on the Irish at home, where they are 7-4 and four at home this year. Their head coach, John McLeod, and Kevin, you have nothing but respect for him. Oh, absolutely. I think he's one of the class acts of our league. He's a terrific basketball coach. And and what kid wouldn't like to play for him? The big question, will Troy Murphy, the freshman from New Jersey, play? He's got a sprained ankle. He's averaging 18 points and nine boards per game. They say he's out. I don't know if you're convinced. I'm not convinced. <laughs> I know Murphy. I know Troy. He's, he's a warrior, and I think if he has any chance to play, he's certainly going to play. But I understand the medical uh, problem that you have. You wonder whether you should hold, like we had with Rashad Kent. So we'll see. Their second leading scorer is David Graves, a freshman from Lexington, Kentucky. McDonald's honorable mention All-American. 13 points per game. This is Anthony Weich, the senior guard. See, they're very similar to our team in the sense that they have Phil Hickey, Anthony Weich, who are seniors, and then they mix in some very talented young players. And when they hit on all cylinders, as you say, great wins at Providence, at Miami, and sometimes they have some problems with execution. Very similar team to ourselves. Uh, on their court, this is going to be a tough game. Martin Inglesby is a guy from Philly, played at Archbishop Carroll. He's averaging eight points and five rebounds per game. Phil Hickey comes up a really good double-double against Seton Hall, and that was another quality win for them. Yeah, absolutely. He's, Phil's played uh, very, very well for them. He's a big presence, and the difference with him is when he can get 12 to 14 points, that makes their team so much better, uh, when, and he, when he has offensive confidence, and he played very, very well against Seton Hall. All right, Coach, let's talk about the keys to this ball game as you head on the road, and it's a ball game I know that you just want to grab and, and take with you and get out of there quick. Well, I said similarities. I think the first thing that they do is they do a good job with their half 
backcourt defense. We've got to take care of the basketball because they get out in passing lanes. They're not going to press you a lot, but they can get you to play sloppy. So take care of the ball. I think secondly, we've got to, we've got to control the glass. We have a chance to rebound well with this team, and we've got to make sure we keep our kids out of foul trouble and try to control the glass. And then lastly, we just have to do a good job with our half-court defense. They're right. very, very good in their motion offense and their sets. They're a system team. They don't beat themselves usually, so we have to be disruptive with our half-court defense. So you're out of that tough stretch where I talked about six very, very uh, tough opponents, but now you have another game. It's on the road. If it's a Big East road game, no matter what, it's going to be competitive. Yeah, I think this is, this is the stretch where you play a lot of teams where you couldn't tell where we might end up here. This, this is a, an important stretch for us, so uh, these are the kind of games you have to get. We're out of that stretch, but we have a whole new set of circumstances that we have to overcome. Spoken like a true coach. <laughs> now, after Notre Dame is Lafayette for Rutgers, so they go out of the conference, and they entertain a team that's 13-4 and overall, 4-0 in the Patriot League, and the Leopards under Coach Fran O'Hanlon are having a marvelous season that game Monday at the Rack. They also have the leading scorer in the Patriot League, 6-4, Brian Ehlers, averaging 18.6 per game, coach. Fran O'Hanlon's an unbelievable job of building this Lafayette program. They have quality uh, win over Princeton. They went out to Purdue and took them right to the wire. Uh, this is a tough team. They've got a lot of weapons, and uh, it's scary. This could be an NCAA team, and uh, at this time of year, you just wonder whether your guys coming back from Notre Dame are going to be ready to play. Well, I'm going to make sure they're ready to play. Now, Tyson Whitfield is out indefinitely with back problems. He left school. Surgery is an option, so the rookie of the year in the league will no longer be with the ball club, but they still have other talent. David Klaus, a senior forward, a role player, a banger. Who, he's kind of thick coach, and those are the kind of guys you got to watch. Yeah, they, this is a team, like I say, that overachieves. They're doing a great job in the Patriot League. They've got a lot of different weapons. They play the matchup zone. They do a lot of good things that are going to present problems. You see here their unselfishness. They just, you know, Tim Big, a Jersey kid, who's going to be pretty motivated to play against us. So, uh, not going to be easy, but we've got to be ready to go coming back from Notre Dame. Please, no snow, no nothing. <laughs> Let's go to South Bend and let's get out of there safely and with a win. And Tim Big, who makes very good decisions, 48 assists, 25 right. turnovers. I think if you've got a decent point guard in the Patriot League, you can make a lot of things happen. Absolutely. This is a team, like I say, that very well could be in the NCAA tournament, could win 20 games this year. Anytime, no matter what level, you have somebody coming into your court with that, you, you better be ready to play basketball. Coming up next, a look at a Kent who has turned into a Superman this year with the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Stay with us on The Kevin Bannon Show. Number 44, Rashad Kent. He has had a marvelous season for the Scarlet Knights. He's given them an inside presence, but he's also a big man who can run the floor. Matter of fact, in high school, he played in the Born to Run All-Star Game in Pittsburgh. Ken Henderson has more on this outstanding freshman. What's the best way to describe Rutgers freshman Rashad Kent? Well, one high school basketball writer described him as a mountain masquerading as a man. And that seems to be the phrase of choice these days when talking about Kent. But no matter how you describe him, one thing is for certain. On the basketball court, Kent is tough to handle. Rashad Kent started his season with the Scarlet Knights as a bench player with high aspirations. Now through hard work and determination, he's earned a spot as a starter and is considered a premier player on this ever-improving Rutgers team. I provide energy for my team. Um, I come in looking to score uh, basically garbage points around the bucket, get a few offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, play good interior defense, and um, just to keep the... Uh, other opponents off the glass as much because um, we've struggled throughout years of um, trying to keep our opponents off the glass and um, trying to gain gain a positive um, a plus for us on the glass and um, uh, it's it's turned out to be that way because um, our inside guys are working very hard right now. The 6'6", 265-pound center is not only big in stature, he's also putting up some pretty big numbers on the court as well. As a senior in high school, Rashad shot 69% from the field and he's continued that streak here at Rutgers. The freshman is shooting a blistering 74% from
from the field. That hasn't been nothing I've really tried to focus on because it'll take away from my game. Going into games thinking about um, how many shots I've made and how many shots I missed. So um, I try to stay unconscious about that or it will definitely affect my game. During his high school career, Kent was selected as the North Central Athletic Conference Player of the Year, as well as a first-team All-State selection, which explains why Rutgers was so anxious to bring the big man to New Jersey. But for Rashad, his biggest challenge so far has been the transition from life in West Virginia to life at RU. It's very fast-paced here. I mean, back home, everything is slow-paced. Everything is such slower than here. It's just so much to do here, and it's a lot of things going on that you you can really barely concentrate but um um i really like this the college life and the college experience and especially at Rutgers because um they have great people and um the academic program is um it's 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 something that uh, has to be reckoned with it's it's very demanding and um that's what i'm here for is to get a great education and Rutgers really offers that Rashad Kent is certainly just one reason why many people think RU's basketball future is so bright. <laughs> and back we go with Rutgers in the lead. And here's a look at Rashad Kent's numbers so far this season. Almost 10 points for Paul Game, 74% for the field, following, as Ken mentioned, 69% in high school. So he's really done a, a real fine job coming out of the gate. And Kevin, you heard uh, Ken talk about him as a mountain masquerading as a man. But uh, you had some interesting thoughts about this mountain, didn't well, you? Well, I love that mountain masquerading as a man quote. But to be honest with you, mountains don't jump about three feet above the rim. And mountains <laughs> don't dunk the way Rashad, rebound the way Rashad does. So he's unique. He's unique and he's fearless, and that's what you want in players, boy. He, this kid wants to be good, and, and he will be. All right, time for the hoop of the week. Uh, this week, unfortunately, or fortunately for the coach, we've got two of them that buy for top honors. It's brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. All right, let's watch it, Coach, because there were some good things that happened in that ball game against Syracuse. Well, that one's a great job of probing the wonderful zone that Syracuse plays. Our kids, you got to go in. You can't shoot over every zone. You've got to probe it. So we do a good job on both of these instances of getting somebody inside and doing a good job of being unselfish. And to get two dunks like that against Syracuse is the, uh, great defense. It's good execution. Were they the hoops of the week or the dunks of the week? Brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. So the Scarlet Knights uh, with a couple of pretty dunks. And it's always nice to get the easy hoop on the weak side off a good feed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you saw the rest of the game, that didn't happen all night. It wasn't that easy. They played great defense, so it was good to see us you know, break them down a little bit. Coming up, a look around the Big East Conference. We'll get to that when we come back in a moment. A bunch of teams are juxtaposed right now in the Big East Conference. I think these next two or three weeks are crucial in terms of positioning, seeing who's going to go up and who's going to go down. Right now, a look around the Big East Conference, and it's brought to you by New Jersey Transit. Here's Ken Henderson. Saturday, Jason Hart powered the 18th-ranked Orangemen over the Hoyas at the MCI Center. The junior guard from Los Angeles helped Syracuse hold on to win a close one after the Orange had blown a 10-point second-half lead. Hart scored 26 points and added 8 assists as the Orangemen earned their 12th win of the year. Damone Brown also tossed in 19 points for the Cuse. Elsewhere, UConn remained perfect and improved to 15-0 as they thrashed the Panthers 81-58. Albert Mooring led all scorers with 18 points for the Huskies. Sunday, the Providence Friars won for the sixth time in their last seven tries as they defeated the Eagles. BC is 0-7 in the conference, and when you play four on five like the Eagles did here, what do you expect? Tuesday in South Bend, Phil Hickey had 16 points and 10 rebounds as the Irish defeated Seton Hall. Chuck Moore had a chance to tie the game with 20 seconds left, but his three-pointer fell just short, and the Irish were able to ice the game from the free throw line and hold on to win 59 to 56. Elsewhere, Anthony Perry's layup with under a minute to go tied West Virginia at 54. But with just two tenths of a second remaining, the Hoyas' Nate Burton was called for a questionable foul. And the Mountaineers' Elton Scott hit the front end of a one and one to give West Virginia a one point win. Meanwhile, John Celestan had 15 points, Malik Allen scored 12 and pulled down eight boards as Nova won their 14th of the season. 
Only six players saw action for the Panthers as they fell to one and six in the conference. And that's this week's trip around the Big East. And the conference standings brought to you by And One Apparel. And Coach, UConn just survived on the road at Miami. Great win for UConn. Miami was ready to play, had that win. It just got away from them. But, hey, it's nice to have the number one team in the nation in our league. And St. John's blew out Providence on the road. Yeah, playing without Tyrone Grant, that surprised me. That St. John's has really come together. And as you talked about earlier, you look at the middle of this conference right now, a lot of teams are bunched together, which says this stretch means something, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. The next couple of weeks are really going to determine some people's fate, not only in regards to setting up for the Big East tournament, but whether you're going to be an NIT team, an NCAA team, or even have a chance to be one of those two things. So is the key stealing one of these on the road? I think the key is to playing consistently good basketball. Right now, those teams that can't do that are going to find themselves, you know, really kicking themselves at the end of February. You've got to play at a high level, stay healthy, and, uh, and, and grab some on the road and get them all at home. You kind of stay mentally sharp throughout this entire stretch, even when every game you can say, all right, guys, this is a big one. Yeah, I mean, the playoffs are always exciting and fun, but to me, this is, this is the, the meat and potatoes time of your schedule. You know, you might play a team on Sunday that plays one style and Tuesday night that plays another style, and you just, the kids have to really be mentally sharp and ready to play. If you need a couple of new speeches, I've got a couple, like, tucked away. We can talk about it after the show. Anytime, Bruce. I, I, I've seen you do your motivational <laughs> thing. You can help us, I'm sure. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts on the Kevin Bannon show in just a moment. Here's Rutgers has eight wins over ranked opponents. Kevin Bannon, you've got four of them. What does it mean to beat a ranked team? It means a lot. When you're trying to build a program, it's all about credibility. And you want to be one of those teams that people goes after, but you have to get some of those teams to get in that position, and that's what we're trying to do right now. Coach, good luck this week. Thanks a lot, Bruce. That's it for the Kevin Bannon Show. We'll see you next week, everybody. Fighting Irish, the lone regular season matchup between these two teams. Notre Dame guard Martin Inglesby will drain the three. He led all scores today with 22 points. But with eight seconds remaining, the score is tied. Rutgers guard Jeff Billis takes the ball to the length of the court. Shot goes up. Buzzer beater is good. 72 to 70. Rutgers, your final. Rutgers, if you remember earlier this week, coming off that big win against Syracuse. Georgia Tech visiting the Cavs. Holds up another buzzer beater. It's all coming up on News Channel 4 at 6. College basketball in the Big East with the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers gun for a road win at Notre Dame. Early first half, and senior Jeff Billett can't find his stroke, but freshman Dante Jones is there for the monster jam. Now Rutgers on defense, and the energetic Joel Salvi starts the fast break to Jeff Billett, to Earl Johnson. He buries the three. Earl in 15, Rutgers by four at the break. The Scarlet Knights take control in the second half. Jeff Greer makes this deal and gets the ball to Billett, who scores in this beautiful Beautiful slashing move. Rutgers up by 10. But sophomore Martin Inglesby fuels a Notre Dame comeback. He scored 19 second half points, including this huge trifecta, which cuts the lead to 68 66. Now tied at 70. Eight seconds to play. And Rutgers gives the ball to point guard Jeff Phillip. He goes the length of the floor and puts up the off balance shot with Inglesby in his face and buries it at the buzzer. The Scarlet Knights with a thriller 72 70 and improved to 12 6 overall five and four in the big east it's not the first time that jeff billet has come up big for the scarlet knights flashback to the quarterfinals of the 1998 big east tournament against georgetown rutgers with the basketball trailing by one and billet goes into the lane and hits the off balance jumper for the victory at the buzzer as yogi would say today was deja vu all over again 
Elsewhere, a local cover Dane cheerleaders, and this guy you're about to see plays for the enemy. That's Jeff Billet on the miss, but Dante Jones is right there to throw it down. Oh, yeah. Rutgers by four at the half. This one went down to the wire. Eight ticks left. Anthony Weiss there for the Irish scores and ties it at 70. But Rutgers with one last shot. Watch Jeff Billet. He has to work against Martin Inglesby here, but it pays off. The leaning jumper does the job and gives Rutgers a 72 to 70 win. So pile on, fellas. Celebrate that one. Meantime, an embarrassing 11 point lead. Sean McLeod tells his team to start thinking threes. They needed a big time comeback and they got one. Notre Dame with the offensive board. Martin Inglesby is all alone for the three. He'll hit it. Inglesby scored 12 of his game high 22 in the final eight minutes. Here's the final 30 seconds. Anthony Weish on the drive, and he goes off the glass for the deuce. It ties the game at 70 with 8.2 to go. And after a Rutgers timeout, they inbound to Jeff Billet, and Billet will take it up the floor himself. Working on Inglesby, the off-balance leaner at the buzzer goes in, and Rutgers wins it at Notre Dame. They pile on Billet. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights emerging with a 72-70 victory. What a thrilling game this afternoon. Battle for the final picks. South Bend, Rutgers, Notre Dame. Final moments, Irish down two. And Tony White driving the lane and hitting a short jumper. We're tied at 70. Eight seconds to go. Rutgers, Jeff Billick taking the inbound pass, working his way up court. The off-balance jumper is good at the buzzer for the win. Like we told you, a thriller, 72-70, the, thr the final. Tennessee and Florida from a game. Now, though, we'll have to settle for hoops, and we've got plenty. A great finish today in the Big East and some powerhouse high school. Look at the Big East basketball record book, which is what we do sometimes around here in our spare time. You'll see that since Rutgers and Notre Dame joined the conference in 1995, the home team has won every single game. The Knights looking to turn that around today in South Bend. We start in the second half with the Knights up seven, and Notre Dame none too happy about it. Rashad Kent gets hammered underneath. That's your basic intentional foul right there, and nearly a second degree assault. Next time, Phil Hickey should put a little catch upon that before he makes somebody try to eat it. The Rutgers lead held up until late in the game when the Irish started to rain threes. Anthony Weish, Ripper, Martin Inglesby, he had 19 in the second half. Irish within two, 14 seconds to go. They go to Weiss. Weiss goes to the hole, and it's tied with eight seconds left. RU gets a timeout and decides to put it in the hands of Jeff Billet. Billet across half court. He'll go behind the back, wants to take his man to the baseline. Fakes, shoots, and hits. Ah, oh, baby, that's the game winner. RU 72, Irish 70. Billet, big time today. Rutgers 12 and 6, looking better every week. It was a big day in high school. Indiana Rutgers and Notre Dame tied at 70. Jeff Billet going at Archbishop Carroll's Martin Inglesby, the leader. Drops. Rutgers wins 72 70. Inglesby did get a career high 22, but the Scarlet Knights moved to 5 and 4 in Big East play. Hey, the Irish, the game came down to the last shot today. Rutgers in red. Jeff Billet puts up the three, and freshman Dante Jones is right there. Dante had 10. Irish going up court. Seven foot Phil Hickey. Come on, get your Jordan tapes out. Irish ball, and Tony White drives, lays it in. That tied the game with eight seconds to go, 70 all. Now Rutgers ball going for the last shot. Jeff Billet shaking and baking. Pass midcourt, stops, looks, turns, shoots. It's good! Jeff Billet of Middletown, New Jersey, wins it for Rutgers, 72-70. And the Scarlet... Maybe Jason today's best. Rutgers at Notre Dame. We're tied. Eight seconds left off the inbounds. Jeff Billet, the length, the drive, the, the leaner at the buzzer. That's a winning shot for Rutgers. Jeff Billet, the hero of the night. Davidson at Tennessee. The nation's best college basketball players are lighting up the courts in your own backyard. Bring a friend or bring the family and check out Rutgers, Ryder, Mammoth, and Seton Hall basketball. New Jersey's Division I basketball. Basketball is right around the corner from your home. So get up, get out, and get into the game. Great seats are available. So call the ticket offices at Rutgers, Ryder, Mammoth, and Seton Hall for ticket information. Here's a list of this week's games. Talk, I'm Bruce Beck, Len Robbins of the New York Post in the studio. We're taking your phone calls tonight at 1-877-CN8 Live. Earlier this evening, Rutgers beat Lafayette. Final score was 84 to 64. Rutgers now 13 and 6 overall. Dante Jones with 20 points and seven boards in the ball game. He joins us on the phone right now. Dante, how you doing? Pretty good, and you? Very good. 
All right. This was a ball game that I know Coach Bannon had a lot of respect for this team going in because they have an excellent record. They are in the Patriot League, but they, they bring a lot to the table. Were you a little concerned as well? Yes, we were. Um, we, were we were aware of their record and, and, and their performances, in which they only lost to Purdue by five. So we, we saw them on tape, and they're a great team, and we just wanted to come out and execute and just try to get a win. How would you guys play tonight? We played, we played okay. Second half, we, we went on a, a nice run, 16-play run. And we were clicking it on defense in the second half, so I think we gave a nice effort. Okay, Len Robinson, the New York Post, is here. He's got a couple questions as well. Dante, your ears must have been ringing this afternoon because uh, your name was being bantied about at the Metropolitan College Basketball Writers' Lunch and that you're one of the guys in the metropolitan area who's really one of the up-and-coming stars. And I'm curious, you know, how you feel about now having made your decision, obviously, to go to Rutgers. Do you feel like you're part of something special, a part of a developing program that, that's on the verge of not just in New York, but nationally gaining some attention? Yeah, I, I feel uh, I, it's a great feeling that I have right now because Coach Bannon is, is working hard to, to make us to be a, a top-notch team and a top-notch program and, and on all facets, and I feel special to be part of this. Now, I know you're only saying that about Coach Bannon so you can get more minutes, but <laughs> how, how does it feel when you know you got guys coming in next year like Josh Moore? Um, well, Josh is a great talent, just adding to, to what we have now, which will hope, hopefully bring us greater success. Dante, I thought tonight would be a tough game for you guys emotionally coming off that tremendous buzzer beater by Billet on Saturday afternoon. Talk a little bit about that ball game. Um, well, that ball game, um, we, we played all right in the second half. And just, <laughs> we, gave a, we gave a nice effort, and Jeff stepped up in the clutch. And, what yeah. about Jeff when he's got the ball late? Does he just want to take it himself? Yeah, that, that's Jeff. That's Jeff's role on the team. He's, he's our, our co-captain. <laughs> In that situation, we just hope to try to rebound for him. I thought you guys were going to kill him after the game. You dive <laughs> on the... excited to get the, this road <laughs> man, off a good Notre Dame team. Well, that was a heck of a victory, and those are the kind of games you have to win if you're going to make it to the tournament, Dante. 13-6 and six now overall. Do you feel like you guys have a decent shot to get in? I hope so. Um, that's, that's one of our, our goals that to, to try and get, get to. So we're just going to try to work hard for the next three weeks and try to get some good big keys to get and Dante, as a New Jersey product, do you feel that you can set the tone and kind of lead by example and get other kids to follow from the Garden State? I'm going to try to. Um, I was a little successful with um, Todd Billet and Josh, Josh Moore, so I'm just going to try to. That's a good start. Thanks, Dante, for joining us. Have a very good evening. Thank you very much. All right, that's Dante Jones, 20.7 boards, Rutgers wins over Lafayette. And Len, your thoughts on Rutgers right now as a ball club? I think they're a very solid ball club. Uh, I think Kevin Bannon is really doing a terrific job. That He clearly has the program turned around. There's enthusiasm. Um, you know, any, anyone who hasn't been to a game at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center, and particularly any opposing team that's never walked in there, you're talking one of the great pits in college basketball. I mean, I think it is a great home court advantage, and I think everything is in place and has been in place at Rutgers for them to be a Big East power year in and year out. And, you know, when you get guys like Dante Jones who say they're going to stay home, they're going to play here. You know, they, they want this to be one of the best programs. You have There's all the resources the right around the block. It's right here. All right, let's open up the phones to Mike from Plainsboro. Hello, Mike. Hey, Bruce, we sort of good evening. Welcome back, everyone. Our phone number, 1-877-268-5483. Len Robbins of the New York Post talking college hoops tonight. Ike in Elberon. What's up, Ike? Hey, Bruce. How's it going, buddy? Good, Ike. It was a pleasure hearing from Dante's Inferno today, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dante can light it up. Yeah, sure can. Um, I got two questions, if you don't mind. It's on the Seton Hall Pirates uh, right now. Very good. 11-7, and 5-4 and four in the league. Obviously, they've lost a couple of tough ones recently, but Tommy Amaker, the job he's doing. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what. I think N New Jersey basketball fans have really got to be feeling blessed right now to have Tommy Amaker and Kevin Bannon in state at, you know, the two major Division I programs. Uh, both of them, obviously, sound coaches. I think Kevin is a really super all-around coach. I think Tommy is a brilliant defensive coach, especially. Um, you know, they're both making a concerted effort to recruit around here, and they're not afraid to go after the big names around the country. I just think there are a lot of good times ahead. I think that's going to be one of the great rivalries in the Big East over the next five, six years. And I'll tell you, I saw Tommy's old backcourt mate, Johnny Dawkins, at 1-877-CNA Live. Mark in Somerville. What's up, Mark? How you doing, Bruce? How you doing tonight? Bruce, you do a great job with the, all the college sports. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Len, uh, you guys kind of stole my thunder earlier because I wanted to talk about Dante Jones. Uh, you know, Barkley's a tremendous player at St. John's, but this kid I think is a little bit underrated. And when they played Providence earlier in the season, uh, Jamel Thomas had 10 turnovers being guarded by Dante Jones. Good point. 
Real good point. And, you know, really, I think the only difference when you talk about an Eric Barkley and a Dante Jones is that from day one, Eric Barkley came in, knew he was going to be the starting point guard, had a great cast around him, and was allowed to do a lot of things. Dante Jones came into a situation where Kevin felt it was better for him to kind of feel his way through a little. I think we're seeing over the last three or four weeks that this is a tremendously talented kid. And as he gets more playing time, he's going to put up these kind of numbers. And you just want him to keep improving on his shot, which is something Len and I have talked about throughout the evening. If he extends his range and works on the J, and he's got plenty of time to do that, Len, he becomes a complete two guard for the NBA. Not that we're looking ahead, but I mean that's what he would become, a perfect two guard, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Uh, you know, there are so many guys right now on so many different levels of college basketball, and that's why I think that, you know, parity really is the reigning world. There, there really aren't that many major upsets in my mind anymore. And the difference that's going to separate the key players, the great players from the good players, why is Wally Serbiak, you know, the kid at Miami of Ohio, considered one of the best players in college basketball? Because not only can he go to the hole, but he can step back and hit a three-point shot. So you've got to have the total game. You know how I liked the other day? I watched Eshmeyer. From My questions was, uh, in the area, uh, we, we have Rutgers and Seton Hall and St. John's, all in the Big East. Uh, what uh, team do you think out of there will do well, not only in the Big East tournament, but, but then in the tournament itself? And uh, where do you see these teams uh, heading in the future? And what a, what a job Jarvis has done with St. John's. You know, Len, it's possible. I was talking to John Paquette today at the, at the Big East that we could have Seton Hall or Rutgers and St. John's in the final four of the Big East tournament this year. Very possible. Oh, we absolutely could. I, I think Rutgers has proven, particularly last year, you know, J Jeff Billett has sort of become the John Elway of, uh, of college basketball here. I mean, you know, you put the ball in this guy's hands in the final few seconds and you got to like your chances an awful lot. Um, I, I think that right now college basketball in the metropolitan area has never been healthier. You know, I think FDU beating LIU last year, um, that program's going to come back again. I, I, I like what I'm seeing around here. I think a lot of the local players are saying, you know what, I can stay home and get everything that I could get if I went away and I can have my friends and my family watch me. I'm staying put. All right, that sounds good for a lot of the local coaches. It bodes well for them. We'll take a break. Again, we're going a little bit... Little, we've got some Rutgers highlights from tonight's bowl game against Lafayette at the rack. Rutgers winning 84 to 64. And we pick it up with the inside play of Rashad Kent. They look for him down the baseline, and there's the jam by the young man from West Virginia. And now, watch Joel Salvi. He's come off the bench this year and given the Scarlet Knights a lot of inspiration, a lot of emotion. He looks for the ball down low. Hotzik is in the bounce pass. He goes glass and connects for two points. All right, Len Robbins, it's a little early for Final Four picks, so will you come back later in the season and we'll really dissect the tournament? It's basketball now. If you've not seen the Rutgers men's team this season, you might be in for a big surprise on Selection Sunday because they could be headed for a 20-win season in the NCAA tournament. Figure that out. Lots to cheer about on the Rutgers campus. The Knights looking for win number 13 last night against Lafayette. RU's first possession, Jeff Greer right to the hole and the finish. Lafayette tried to stick around. Ted Cole in the commotions, easy deuce there. And then another easy one right here for the Leopards. Yeah, they're the Leopards. Rashad Kent took exception to all of that. He answered with this, unobstructed to the hole. Send them in there. The Knights' other freshman starter contributing so quick off the dribble. Dante Jones release count it and you'd think Jones's man would have learned from that one uh-uh baseline again Knights by 20 84 to 64 um, yeah I think you know in the beginning um, we struggled a little and you know Lafayette's a pretty good team and uh, you know we had to get into the game a little and I think you know them getting off to a pretty good start and us struggling was a might have been good for us because you know made, made the guy real guys realize that this was a pretty good team and that we were gonna have to you know play well to beat them and we weren't just gonna be able to coast through this game it was ugly, but uh, you know we won, and, and, and they're a very good team. And our guys are going to watch that tape a few times because you can learn from a team that plays that hard, executes that well, and they just—they're a good team. They're, they're, I'd be shocked if they're not an NCAA team this year. And uh, at FDU, the old Ma brothers academies, Todd Billet dropped in 22 in a win against Manalapan. That gave the three-year starter 1,000 career points. A big week all around for Todd. In addition to the 1,000 career points, he's our MSG Daily News Tri-State Athlete of the Month for January. Todd Billet is your extraordinary, ordinary Joe. Star basketball player? Well, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking in the crowded halls of Christian Brothers Academy. 
You look at me, you say, oh, what's he do? Does he play soccer or baseball? I mean, no one will say, oh, he's a big time basketball player. That, that never happens. And I always like to prove people wrong and be, be the guy that, that's told, oh, you can't do that. But I'm going to go out and I'm going to practice and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that I can do that. Scrocky into the corner. Fill it from three. He's got it. Who expects any kind of an advantage because he's the best player on the team? Um, is one of our hardest workers in practice. Uh, I've been very blessed as a coach over the years to have our best players be our hardest workers in practice, and Todd fits right into that mold. In everything I do, I always like to say I give 100%. And, and when I write my name on the test paper, when I go out on the court, I always want to represent my name and my family well. It's tough to balance both basketball and academics and, and excel in both, but it definitely can be done. He's not the first billet to balance both very well. Older brother Jeff went through what Todd's gone through four years ago. When Jeff was being recruited, there were always those uh, doubters that thought he would be able to play on the uh, Big East level. Uh, I don't think Todd is facing that because of what Jeff did. And Jeff proved that he could do that. Someone of their stature and ability could do uh, could perform at that kind of a level. When I play, I never, never once think about, hey, oh, if I don't do well, they're, they're going to say I'm not as good as Jeff. I never once thought that because you know, we're two different people, we're four years apart, and, and I was just going to go out and, and do my thing and, and just and, and let the chips fall where they should let people make the comments, oh, he's better than Jeff or he's not better than Jeff. It really didn't matter because I was going out playing hard and I, I never really thought about living up to my brother. The straight-A student stands 5 feet 11 inches, one inch shorter than his big brother. And at this point in his career, he's ahead of where Jeff was. He should be a better player than me. I think he has more tools, just um, athletic ability, just some natural things that, that I just, I don't have. And, I, and I'll I'm fr freely admit that, but I will not admit to him beating me one-on-one -on -one because um, there's there's something, you know, an older brother, a younger brother, I don't care how good he, he gets or uh, what level, how tall he grows or how strong, it's just something about an older brother and, you know, that's one thing that I, I, will, I will never let happen. The real winner in the billet battle, not Jeff nor Todd, but Kevin, as in Rutgers head coach Kevin Bannon. What Todd brings to the table is he's a, a point guard mentality, makes everybody around him better. But what I like about him is he's a, score, he's a scoring point guard. I always want my point guards to be able to score. I think uh, I don't want a robot running the show for me. I want a kid that's got range on a shot, a kid that can get in the lane and make plays. And Todd can do all those things. And at the same time, he's very unselfish. So he's the perfect point guard for our system and, and for me. Once I step on that court, I'm, I'm there to win. I'm there to, there to beat my man. I'm there to help my team win. And once you step on the court, it becomes personal. And just, I mean, it's an individual game with, with the guy you're matched up with, but it's also, you got, you got to incorporate your game in with the four other guys and help your team win. And it's just, once you step out there, you got to be, give it all. And, and once you step off the court, you're friends again. But, but for those, for those 32 minutes, you're out there to kill the other guy. Phillip pulls up and hits the roll. You ever wish Jeff had a red shirt year so you could play at least one year together? Yeah, it would be nice. We've only been on the same team one year, and I was in bitty basketball with the, with the eight-foot hoops, and he, he was a 10-year-old and I was a six-year-old, and, and that, that was the one year that we played, one, one season. And um, but after that, we haven't played on the same team. And it would be kind of nice to get one year in college, but it's also nice that we're not going to have to We'll be practicing and, and maybe fighting for playing time. So he had his college career, and now, it, now it's, it's going to be my turn next year. So it, it's kind of worked out. Well, here he is, Todd Billet, our MSG Daily News Tri-State Athlete of the Month for January. And tell everybody the story about when Kevin Bannon came down to recruit you for uh, when he took you back up to school. Okay, um, well, Coach Bannon called about... Um, at 9 o'clock that morning and, and said they were going to be a little late, so I knew something was up. And they came, they came about 10 minutes late, and they came down to cold the second, and they were driving in the motorhome. And 
they, had, they cooked his breakfast. Sean Exani was on the trip too. Um, they cooked his breakfast all the way up, and then we went and played around the golf at, on the golf course. We had Dave Bannon cook for you. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not cooking for you. We're not going to give you any food, but we are going to give you some awards. And joining us today to help us with the presentation. Dave Manning from Comcast of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and Kenny Lucas from the Daily News. Dave, thanks for coming out. No problem. Todd, congratulations on behalf of Comcast and MSG for being selected Athlete of the Month. Thank you, appreciate it. Dave, thanks a lot. And uh, also with us today, a new look at the Daily News, Kenny Lucas, and I'll tell you, he comes dressed better than most of them too. Kenny, thanks for coming out. Thank you, Todd, on behalf of the Daily News. Congratulations. And we've got this framed back page here. We're sure, sure you'll be on it several more times in a Rutgers uniform. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Kenny, Dave, thanks a lot. Well, uh, we're into January now, and now it gets serious. And you're getting ready, and I know this Christian Brothers team wants to get to the Tournament of Champions, but you have some good teams you'd have to go through to get there. Yeah, it's definitely pro LA is loaded this year. Um, St. Joe's been touching in the A-South is always tough every year. Um, Bishop Eustace, is, I mean, they're up there in the state ranking, too. Can the Catholic, I mean... It seems like Parochial LA is absolutely loaded this year, and then if, if you are lucky enough to get by A-South, you have Seton Hall prep waiting for you up north, so it would be a battle, and whoever comes out of Parochial LA is going to be a strong contender for the PSC. Well, Todd, we wish you the best of luck, and that A-South championship, if it ever could end up being St. Joseph, Metuchen, and Christian Brothers, you're looking at two of the best point guards in all of America, Todd Billett and Jason Williams. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Cable systems out there and viewers of the high school show, if you have anybody like a Todd Billet who you think would be worthy of our Athlete of the Month, give us a call at the Garden at 212-465-5949, or you can write me, care of Madison Square Garden Network, 4 Pennsylvania Plaza, 4th Floor, New York, New York, 1001. Two of the real good guys have played basketball, Todd Billet and his brother Jeff. Back with our Chase Downtown Athletic Club Basketball Players of the Week when we return on The Boss by IG Design High School Weekly. the buzzer again. Hello again everyone, I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome to the Kevin Bannon Show. In his first home game of his college career, Jeff Billett beat the Mammoth Hawks 57 to 55. Last year,